11th. And I'm going to do something different this stream than I normally do. I'm going to go crazy. No, wait, I always do that. Karen will join me, you know, in and out over the next hour and a half, I guess. Let's see, wait, what's this Perrier doing? After this Perrier and the next Perrier, there's only three cases of Perrier left. Yeah, 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 get some more Perrier. This isn't the hottest. Oh. Yay, Nick32681 subscribed. Hooray for everybody. Da, 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 da. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Hooray, thanks for the sub and such, maybe and such, and so forth. So many Perrier, so little desk. We're going to analyze some of my games from the 80s and 90s. I tried to find games you've never seen, but I couldn't do it because I've shown so many of my games. So you've seen three or four of the games, and I'm going to show you nine. And maybe you've seen zero if you don't watch all my videos. And, all right. But there's several you haven't seen, so that's good. Hello, proper Rasta. How did you do in the competition? What competition? For how beautiful I am? Let's see. Nine. Go, Ben. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to have a uh, lecture at 7 p.m. Eastern on the, you know, the Zoom link. You'd sign up for the lecture at our website, atlchessclub.com slash events. Yay! Drill Jockey gave 50 subs. Wow! I don't know who Drill Jockey is, but thanks. Not to be outdone, although he's certainly outdone, is Water Dragon888, who subscribed with Prime. Wow, Drill Jockey killed it. 50 subs. 50. I forgot what I was talking about. Yay! Now, if everybody could do that, we'll be heading somewhere. Yay, Drill Jockey. Man, I thought she, Jesus, was my, my savior. Now I'm not so sure. Yay, go Drill Jockey. Somebody make him a, an MVP or whatever you call it. Let's see. VIP Drill Jockey. See, did I spell it right? Uh, find out. He drilled me. I'll play some Title Tuesdays and I'll do some commentary, but I just, I was asleep today. Yay, first stream catching live. Mustachiola subscribed. Hooray. Um, yeah. Hooray. Da, da, da. Did it work, me making him an MVP? You have added as, M yeah, uh, I mean VIP, MVP. Maybe he's MVL, I don't know. The evening is good. The guy donated 50 subs. Yeah. He and or she. Hooray. Um, so tomorrow we're doing something we've never done before. Uh, I'm going to compliment. No, wait, I'll never do that. Um, so before the pandemic, <coughs> we had classes on Wednesday or Tuesday, depending on we moved around a little bit. But anyway, and I taught them in person in this room. And we got, you know, four to ten people. And we would put those on the internet later, usually. Then with the pandemic, we were closed for six months. Nobody could come in here. So I did online lessons on Tuesday or Wednesday, or Spencer did. And those went on the YouTube channel also. And now we're reopened. And... We're going to do a, a, you know, both, a mixture. So tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern, you can sign up online uh, and watch on Zoom like we've always done. Or you can come in the Chess Center and watch it here. So we have a big TV up there where people can see the lesson. They'll sit behind me. And we have to rearrange the room. And by we, I mean Karen. Uh, so there'll be, there'll be people online and people here that can ask questions and whatever whatever that's tomorrow at 7 p.m 
atlchessclub.com slash events. And then Saturday, we're having a one-day tournament. And the next weekend, we're having a two-day tournament, Saturday, Sunday. atlchessclub.com has all of our events and how you sign up and how you donate and how you join the club and whatever. And atlchessclub.com slash events has, you can sign up for everything. You can see all our tournaments, our classes. You can do whatever you want. Uh, or you can do whatever you like, right? Yeah, it's Karen. I'm going to be on Chess TV from 9 to 11, uh, which is in 40 minutes. Then we'll have more viewers. It's hard for me to believe we have 157 viewers. We've got to have like 400. Lies, lies. Um, all right, let's see here. I have to go back and see what happened. Okay, nothing happened. Uh, carry the one... Katanka subscribed at tier one. Hooray, on a two month streak. Uh, MP Logicious subscribed. Good. Uh, did I ever play Salov? No, he's too good. Mandex420 subscribed. You are great. I know it. Uh, look at you. Look at you. He subscribed with Prime. There, there's a movie you've never heard of. And when I say you, I'm, yeah, 1,200 viewers, that's better. There's a movie you've never heard of, and by you I mean 95% of you, called Take the Money and Run. It's a Woody Allen movie. It's a long time ago. I'm going to say early 70s, but it might have been mid-70s. I don't know. Anyway, uh, there's two funny scenes. One is Woody Allen's complaining because somebody said, how do you do? And he heard, how do you Jew? And he was discussing how the guy is against Jews because he said, how do you do? But he pronounced do like Jew. And then there's, an there's another scene where he's robbing a bank and he has a gun and he, I mean, he, it's in his pocket. And he gives the teller a note. He says, you know, I'm robbing the bank. I have a gun. And the guy reads it and it says, I have a gub. He says, you have a gub? And he says, well, let me see that. He says, no, no, that's an N, not a B. He says, oh, no, that's a B. And they have a long discussion. They bring other tellers over. Is that an N or a B? He's like, no, no, that's a B. He says, no, I wrote an N. I have a gun. He says, no, no, he said, you have a gub. And then it went on and on. Very semantical. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have a gub. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That movie was crazy, but not bananas. Yeah, bananas was funny. You have to suck out the poison. Yeah. Go Woody Allen, etc. That's what his ex-wife said. Get out of here. Frankly, ridiculous. So the, the purpose of this stream tonight, which is different than other streams, is I'm going to analyze games that I played in the 80s and 90s, hopefully you haven't seen. And if you've watched every video I've ever made, you've seen three or four of them. Um, but you still haven't seen five or six of them. And probably you forgot, because these are games I don't show a lot, if you have seen them. Um, some games I show a lot, so I, I can't show those. So this is when I was between 14 and like 30. No, 25. So all these games were played between the ages of 14 and 25. Um, so I was somewhere between 2200 USCF and you know, 2575 USCF, something like that, yeah. Seaburn 1985 subscribe with Prime. Prime, false, correct. Wait, what? And then let's see. I received a level five hype train emote. I did? I never get an emote because I have them all. Guess I don't. Wow, I got a hype train emote. I, is what you or me? That's me. I never get an emote. Wow, I have a new emote. I don't know, it's new. I never, I mean, it's, you know, from the hype train. I never get anything from the hype train, ever. We're having a tournament tonight because it's Tuesday night, we have the month long. 
There's 36 players across the hall playing. They're all wearing masks. And Archer played a 1470 in Archer one in like half an hour. So he's like 1660 or so. Yeah, he took that guy out back. Yeah. It's funny, it said I had like 125 viewers, and I'm like, that can't be right. Mm -hmm. And then like 20 seconds later, it said I have 1,300. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. that's better. Yeah, now I have uh, 1,100, now I have 100, now I have zero. Damn. Okay, I have to kind of be in and out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what he <laughs> said. Yeah. Because uh, I am working right now, hello. GW1337, subscribe with Prime. Hooray. The more you subscribe, the more subs we have. Hello, everyone. Oh, I didn't tell you. See Drill Jockey right there? Yes. He donated 50 subs like when the stream started, like a minute in. Oh, that's so great. So I'm still making noise from that. I don't think I <laughs> know about Drill Jockey. I'm not a member. <laughs> hey, Felix. How's it going? Mm -hmm. Hey, Squire. So tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, I'll be playing in the Arena Kings. And then, as I said, 7 o'clock, I'll have the lecture here with all kinds of, you know, mm -hmm. stuff. Aw, well, El, you can do it another time. El Papas is, El, El Poposes. Yeah, we have to figure out how to set the room up. And that reminds me of pupusas, which I can't have anymore. Mm. Man, pupusas are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I have no viewers. Hooray! Back to nothingness. Mm -hmm. That's correct, Stonkfish. Unless you make more money, then give me that. I wanted to join the class tomorrow. What? Yeah. Uh, you just saw... Norman Lloyd died? Oh, I didn't know Norman Lloyd died. Aw, he was the oldest. He's an um, actor, and he was 106. He was... Me, he, did you ever see St. Elsewhere? No. No. Oh. Uh, did you ever see everything else he was in? He was old in St. Elsewhere. That was like 40 years ago. Yeah. I didn't watch any of those shows. Saint? Mm -hmm. What was it? Blues? Well, I didn't know Norman Lloyd Hill died. Street Blues? Aww. Yeah, Norman Lloyd was in every... For like <clears throat> 75 years he was acting. So, yeah. Was he in movies too? Yep. I guess? Movies, TV shows. So... Yeah. Like and, and I found Broadway too, I think. What's a movie? He was you thought in? Michael Douglas was the oldest actor? Okay, you spelled Michael wrong. You met Kirk Douglas, and Kirk Douglas already died. So you only made three mistakes in that sentence. And you didn't put a comma between man, I thought. Yeah, terrible. Mm -hmm. And you didn't capitalize Douglas. I mean, I, you, you didn't end the sentence with a period. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Did you see Dead Poets Society? Mm -hmm. Oh, he was in that, they said. Oh. I'll show you a picture. He's pretty distinct. Uh, what's his name? I already forgot. Michael Douglas? No, Abe Froman. Uh, Norman Lloyd. I confuse him with Conrad Bain for no reason. Yeah, see him? Oh, yeah, I do recognize him. Yeah. So he died. Oh, he died yesterday. His spouse died a thousand years ago. Not too long ago. Man. Mm -hmm. He got his acting start during the New Deal. Finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do recognize yeah, He was always old except when he was young. Yeah. Man, look at, look at him. Man, the truth hurts. <laughs> and he got older. Yeah, he was the head of the hospital in, uh, in St. Elsewhere. I don't know if he was the head of the hospital, but maybe he was chief yeah. of something. Yeah. Okay. He was the oldest, so he had to be the head. Yeah. Michael right. Douglas looks gotta, so young. I got to go quiet, quiet down the rabble here. Mm hmm The Hoover Dam. Hmm? Yeah, it's from Montana OV. I don't believe it. Oh, wait a minute. Hey, I'm streaming tomorrow with Ovi. Mm -hmm. 4, 4 p.m. Eastern. That's right. And I'm doing Arena Kings 1 to 3, and then my class is at 7, but mm -hmm. not on the stream. It's, you mm -hmm. have to pay for it. Yeah, Ovi's coming over here. Clint Eastwood's pushing 100? 
Anyway. I thought Clint Eastwood was exactly 90. Unless, like, hey, Pam. Unless I ban him for being too loud. Pam's had a lot of capitals and small letters. I don't remember that. Yeah, what's going on? I don't remember that. Isn't, isn't Clint Eastwood 90? I don't know. I didn't think he was pushing 100. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, those in-game lectures are great. Hey, Siri. How old I'm is Clint Eastwood? Like them. I'm going to go back over Clint Eastwood again. is 90 years old. Yeah, he ain't pushing 100 yet. You want pushing 100, that's Betty Davis. That's Mel Brooks. That's who's pushing 100. Hey, Siri, how old's Mel Brooks? Mel Brooks is 94 years old. Terrible. He's yeah. no Betty Davis. How old is Betty... Da not Betty Davis. How <clears throat> hey, Siri, how old is Betty White? Betty Davis. Betty White is 99 years old. 99? Yeah. At least we know what school she went to. Are they both dead, the sisters, or is one of them alive? Olivia de Havilland and Joan Fontaine. Are they both dead? I thought they were both dead. I thought Olivia recently died, or no? I don't know. Hey, that, Siri, is Joan knows. Fontaine alive? Joan Fontaine's dead. Damn, harsh. John Fontaine was born in 17... Joan Fontaine. <laughs> Joan Fontaine. <laughs> oh, she died in 2013. Mm -hmm. Is Olivia de Havilland dead? Yeah, July 2020. Yeah, yeah. that she, was recently. She was probably 100. Yeah, because we had this discussion back when she died. Yeah, she's probably 100. About whether Joan was alive. First of all, most of the chat hasn't heard of either one. Mm -hmm. And the chat that had, has heard of Olivia de Havilland and not Joan Fontaine, which is the other half, they, they were sisters. And they didn't get along. Mm -hmm. They were like, I hate you, you hate me. And they both won Academy's Award. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, Deesky 313. Michael Douglas married Catherine Zeta-Jones like 30 years ago. I mean, that was like a long time ago. <laughs> Michael Douglas is a lot older than Catherine Zeta-Jones, but he wasn't as old as Kirk Douglas. God damn. He just looks as old as his dad, even though his dad died. Mm -hmm. Still looks, looks bad. <clears throat> yeah. There's a funny family guy scene in the episode where uh, Peter meets a genie, and the genie gives him three wishes. And he's used his first two like, you know, for like nothing. He's on a bus and some guy says he's going to break every bone in his body. So as the guy's about to punch him, he says, I wish I had no bones. So the genie says, that's your last wish. And he has no bones. He's just all flab. Mm -hmm. So then he goes to Hollywood. I don't remember why. And he's at a party. And Catherine Zeta-Jones says, would you like to sleep with me? He says, I have a thing for old, flat, shabby like men or something. Mm -hmm. Then they go to Michael Douglas right and he's talking to some hot young woman he says would you sleep with me i'm married to Catherine zeta jones that's his pickup line <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so forth not crabtastic subscribe with prime i'm spartacus no i'm spartacus all right i have to go that's walk. a kirk douglas uh, you know reference he's spartacus yeah right, i'm gonna go circle through the tournament room i mean pretty mm -hmm. much i just have to come in and out and just do mm -hmm. your thing and that sounds like when we get... Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because I, I am in charge of the tournament. I guess mm -hmm. I will be back. Stony Curtis. That's a Flintstones reference. Mm -hmm. Good good Flintstones reference. Good job. Nobody's perfect. Oh, snap. That's a Some Like It Hot reference. A lot of references here. Okay, let's begin with the, you know, the chess part. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you if you if you got a Flintstones reference, I know it. You can get me on that. God damn. Okay. So we're gonna look at games I played in the '80s and '90s. Uh, Kurt Russell, yeah. Etc. Yeah, they're streaming for two hours tomorrow, four to six, because I'm starting at seven and we have to set up. Okay, this game was played when I was younger than I am now. Uh, let's see. Can I even find out? Yeah, I don't know. Let me just get rid of chess space because I'm, I'm annoyed. I don't mean like the, the pizza. I don't mean like the Domino's or Little Caesars. Man, I messed that joke up. Okay. Uh, I have no comment about Mishra. 
Okay, so uh, this guy is Levine or Levine, depending on who you ask. He was about 2100, and I had black and a French defense. And it, the lecture tomorrow is specifically on this position, which is a coincidence. I didn't pick that game for this reason. Um, it's on the French Tarash because the, uh, the f fabulous poker player who is sponsoring the next two lectures, he wanted a lecture on the Tarish French, and he won him one on the King's Indian, so next week will be the King's Indian. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm still up in the air with the lesson with MJ Gonzalez this week. It should be this week, but he has to get back to me, and uh, so forth, mainly and so forth. Yeah. Is it Gus? Is who Gus? It's Karen. <clears throat> yeah, his the the poker player who's sponsoring the next two lectures is Olivier Bousquet. He said I could use his name, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mainly and so forth. They missed you. You can't be leaving Aww. like that. Thank you, greetings. Is ladies. Spencer done, or you don't know? He's still playing. Mm -hmm. What about uh, Ethan on board one? Um, I didn't see anybody. I think they're done. Okay. How did Andrew result. Jang do against, you know, Christopher Ferrante? Yeah, I didn't ask. Didn't don't ask, don't tell. But Spencer's game, they're both uh, even material. I couldn't really tell much about the game. Not much off the board. It just was a little bit too complicated for me. Any advice on breaking a losing <clears throat> streak? Yeah, win or draw. Okay. Now, in this position, I played my favorite variation at the time in the Tarash, which is named after Karen's favorite grandmaster, Carlos Guillemard. Hmm. And that's knight c6, attacking the pawn on d4. So my opponent played knight gf3, which is common. And unfortunately, the purpose of this line is to play f6. Boo! But that's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Now that he played knight b3, so his bishop could get out and he can control some squares, I tried to kick his knight. And he let me, so I did. And then I played check, and he played bishop d2. The idea of this check was after c3 to play a3, confusing the audience. Well, the engine says this is better for white, slightly better for white. But that was why I did that. And he played bishop d2 instead. And then I played f6. So I'm going to attack the center. And my idea is if I take with the knight, if he takes my bishop, I can get c5 in. OK. So he played bishop b5. Takes, 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 and castles. Now I'm threatening this because I'm not pinned anymore. If I had taken on e5 on the previous move, that just loses a piece because my you know, he's pinning both of my knights. He would just take. Thanks for the 250. 250, farty party. Okay. And he doesn't want to take this because then he has no white squared bishop. Then my white squared bishop comes to fruition. Okay, so he played knight d3. And even though uh, this game was played a long time ago, I should have sacrificed the exchange. That's clearly the best move, and then taken here, and it's really good for black. Also, knight d4 is good. So let's say I take, and he takes, and I go here, threatening his bishop and threatening knight f3, winning his queen. So rook takes f3 is winning, but I played knight a7, which is a funny move. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stab anybody. OK. He took this. He, sh he should take that, probably. Mm -hmm. Um, and it still wants me to sacrifice the exchange, which is funny. Um, yeah, I mean, I wanted to go here. And then that looks annoying. That looks real annoying. Yeah. Now, he's not losing because he can play knight f4 threatening here. And then if I defend it, he can play c3 and get his bishop out. Probably we both missed that. Okay, so he took, takes, knight c5. Right, and this position is very bad for white because I have a target. Um, I got a Walmart. Uh, I mean, I got I got everything. I got Gucci, so I can move my pawns up, 
or I can attack this pawn, or I can double or triple here, or I can sack the exchange. And what is he going to do? Nothing, because I have more center pawns than he does. And here comes more. Okay. Yeah, so his game is frankly terrible. He played Rook here because he wanted to be one of the cool kids. That's what the point of that was. Yeah. Yeah. So now he's losing because I'm attacking this and this, and I control all the squares, and he doesn't have any counterplay, and he doubled up behind his pawn. Frankly, ridiculous. Okay, then he blundered. I'm threatening everything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing I'm not threatening. C4 is explosive. Now, C4 is a really, really, really bad move. And I'll tell you how bad it is. Now, Karen will tell you what's the evaluation of this position. Not even plus one for me. Right. Then after this, mm -hmm. we haven't learned numbers that high yet. And plus eight. Now, we've talked about this before, but nobody ever remembers it. So I guess I can just keep saying it. When you make a move in chess, no matter what move it is, you're unprotecting something. Something that may or may not need protecting, right? So that's every move you make. So when I played rook f5, the previous move, I undefended the back rank, which doesn't matter, but could matter, just doesn't. And when my queen was here and I did that, I undefend, you know, and every move does that. So c4, right, that undefends these two squares, and they were both protected. Mm -hmm. So obviously this is better because I attack everything, but his knight's there. So I just sack the exchange, and he didn't, didn't take the rook. But if he does take the rook, not only does this win, I just have forced checkmate. And then this is mate or this is mate, because his pieces aren't defending too well. So he actually can't take. So ridiculous. Oh, I see. Okay. Now, a normal person would resign here, because it's a slow game. But since he didn't, we have a funny finish. Always retreat. And then I sacked a piece instead of taking something because I'm mating him. Yeah. Now here I made the worst. Th it's the worst thing I've ever done in my chess career. Ever. I've never done anything worse. I played rook h4. And he resigned. Because unstoppable rook h2 mate. Mm -hmm. But that's horrible. What should I have done? Um, you could have said queen h2 mm -hmm. and then rook h4. I, I didn't see it. Four. Yeah. That's what I should have done. Mm -hmm. And this isn't as good technically because he can play queen h7 check. Otherwise, it's they're both mating too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, you have a chance to do that. You have to do that. Now, you, the show off. you guys are always like 2,000 players are the best and so forth. This guy's 2,100. He didn't look great. He, he didn't look like he was, you know, in the game. Just, I just sort of ran over him. I mean, I am bigger than him. Well, he was pretty big. Maybe he was bigger than me. I was 14. He was bigger than me. How did I run over him? Okay, let's analyze the game, which I've never done. I've never analyzed these games. Is it Rufus or Doofus? Was it Ovi? Okay. Run report. Let's see how badly I played when I was 14 or 15 or whatever. Mainly whatever. Let's see. I played 96.8. He played 64.6. 96.8 is good when I was a little kid. I accept that. All right. That's not bad. He didn't play very well. Now, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was no chess on the internet. In, in the old days, when there was no chess on the internet, and you played somebody 2100, they played you know, 65. However, in current times, people rated 800, 700, 1,000, 1,200. They play in the 90s all the time. Hmm, I wonder why that would be. Um, frankly, ridiculous. Yeah. 
I'm not saying they're cheaters, but you know, they're cheaters. It's funny, uh, we have a kid here who, um, he was a beginner when I met him. Like he was like, what are the pieces called? And it was about four or five years ago. And now he's like 1900. And his dad was like, how come my kid's 1900, but on like the internet, he's like 1600. Because everybody's cheating against him. Everybody cheats, that's why. And he's like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, the important thing is everyone on the internet's cheating at all times. Hooray. It's funny, if you have a tournament like I do, like I did yesterday, very few cheaters. Maybe one, maybe two, maybe zero, but not too many. But if first prize is $5, then it's like half the field's cheating. Ridiculous. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. All right, 11 minutes. Good chat, good chat. Not too good. Okay, next next game. You're so next. This game was played at the 1984 U.S. Junior Championship against Bertazumakawa. And it was my first U.S. Junior. I was 14. These games are in chronological order, so I guess I was 14 the last game. Yay! Thanks, Anonymous. You're the best. Yeah, Bert was about 2200 something, and I was maybe high 2200s. And this was in Ojai, California, as discussed previously. And I got five out of 11. I actually had five out of nine, and then I lost my last two rounds. <laughs> the winner of the event was Patrick Wolf. And the other players, I don't know how they finished. Uh, Stuart Rachels, Max Delugi, me, Igor Stern, I think, uh, Paul Truong, the Paul Truong, uh, Timothy Pallant. Timothy Pallant played in this event, didn't do too well. Then he played in the U.S. Open uh, later that year, I guess right after this tournament, because it was in August. And he, he won like seven games in a row at some point. And very shortly thereafter, in the next year or two, he, uh, yeah, he did something you, you can't talk about on Twitch. So that's unfortunate. I think maybe, maybe actually he was sick. That could have been it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe he was sick. Yeah, maybe somebody knows. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened now. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think he was just sick. I don't think it was what I thought it was. Now, in the 70s, before I was playing in tournaments, I was, you know, I played in local tournaments against 700s. There was a player named Bill Adam. He played in the U.S. Junior Championship. He got zero in one of them. And one of the games he got checkmated in two moves. He lost on purpose, you know, G4, F3. And, he, and the stuff I was saying before, that's, that's what happened. I never met him, but probably Yasser could talk about him. Yasser probably knew him. He was playing in those juniors. Do you need a ruling? Well, I'm going to look it up. Okay. I mean, it. The, the, the issue is that, um, let me take this back off. Take it off. <laughs> well, um, excessive changing of, like, first of all, you're supposed to you know, move and then write it down. So someone's writing the move down and erasing it, and then five minutes later, writing one down, then waiting five minutes and erasing, like, changing it multiple mm -hmm. times during your move. And so... When I told Yay, $15. the complainer <clears throat> that I would um, would get, issue a warning, just tell him how to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And he said, well, if nothing's going to happen, then don't worry about it. Like, okay. It's not nothing. You're issuing a warning if he right. does it again. Right. That's what I told him. I said, well, he felt like that it was helping him, like it was helping him by doing that. And I said, well. Yeah, that's why it's illegal. <laughs> right. Well. <laughs> 
possible, but it's also distracting too to constantly be arrested. Yeah, yeah, but the, yeah, they made it. They made that illegal for that reason. But it was legal for like eighty years. I know. So, um, but I said, you know, I could give him a warning, and yeah. he, he um, said, never mind. But I talked to him about it after. I think the main thing is he just wanted to get back and get mm -hmm. focused on the chess and didn't want to mm -hmm. get too sidetracked. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm back. What is the link to the tournament? Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Those 50 subs were good. Frankly, delicious. Okay. So this is the 84 U.S. Junior. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm playing Bird Makawa. Quick chess soon thereafter. I'm white, and it's a Queen's Gambit. They actually based the mini series on this game. Oh. Okay, this is the main, 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 main line. You could take or play Bishop H4. This stops the Lasker, and it stops the Tartakar Makagandov. Thanks, uh, Steinzi, for the sub. Okay. Now, in this position. Uh, the most common move is rook c1. And I like to play a move that Karpov played in his matches because nobody plays it, so I like that. And that move is queen d2. Now, the purpose of queen d2, well, there's two purposes. You might castle queen side, and I have, and then I, you know, go insane in the membrane. The other idea is typically black wants to play dc and then play c5 occasionally d c and e5 and so you want to play rook to d1 because then you discourage any c5 or e5 because you're you know, controlling the the file here um okay and the other main reason is my opponents don't know queen d2 they know whatever the main lines are okay so he took right away which is bad because i haven't moved my bishop yet so you want him to go here and then then have to take so that's not good. And then I played rook d1, which makes it very hard to play this because my, you know, I'm, I'm pinning him and such, mainly and such. And he played e5 anyway. Okay, so now it's very interesting to take this. And I have done that in similar positions. This position's better because I'm a tempo up because he took right away. So the idea behind this is that if the rook takes, the rook isn't defending the queen. So you can take this and you're pinning the knight. And if you move the bishop way to safety, you have e6 forking. Yeah. Okay, and then white's much better here. Mm -hmm. If you play king takes, it's similar. You take this and if you take this, the bishop is overworked. Mm -hmm. So you can take this with check and if he takes, you take this and you're winning. So after takes, he has to move his bishop away if he wants to be up material, but you can't do that here. Yeah, now I'm winning. E6 wins and queen d5 wins because this position is ridiculous. He has to go here. And, I mean, ridiculous position. After here, it says white's completely winning. White's threatening this and e6, and this is pinned. Uh, horrible. King f7 is the best move, which, I mean, just loses a piece. So horrible position. So I should have played bishop f7 because I'm a tempo up. I have played bishop f7 when it wasn't as good uh, on the internet and in real life, and I always win. Okay, so I played d5 because I'm a positional player. Rookie, it's a very bad move because I have my bishop on this diagonal. It's a very poor move. And one of the reasons I don't like to play e4 when I have a chance in queen pawn openings is I like my knight to go to e4. Or at least have the option. Okay, he played a6. And this move I was really proud of. I remember being proud of it. Even though it was in 1984. Mm -hmm. It was bishop b3. I was like really proud of myself. I don't know if it's a good move, but I just liked it. And yeah, the engine doesn't like it. But the idea is if he plays b5, he's not attacking this. And the bishop is better here than here because you can't gain a tempo on it. And it's defended here. Okay, he played knight b6, which is a bad move. And then I unleashed the latent potential of my bishop. Although maybe now it's actualized. Okay. And he took, which is a mistake. And now, you know, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Right? And this bishop is blockaded, so which Simpsons character wouldn't like it? 
I have no hope. Lisa Simpson. Bart said, I'm one of those pieces in chess that doesn't matter. And Lisa said, well, a blockaded bishop is of little value, but I think you're talking about a pawn. She did? Hmm? Mm. The, the, what happened was Homer was trying to outdo Flanders, and Homer's kid played miniature golf, so he wanted Bart to be better than his kid to beat him. So mm. he was, the, everything that mattered was playing miniature golf and getting better. So he was a pawn in Homer's you know, scheme. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. We don't allow bishops here when we have kids' tournaments for obvious reasons. All right. So he played rook e7, defending. I castled finally. Bishop g4, which is a very bad move, the losing move. Queen b4, threatening this. And unleashing on this. So like knight f7 would be crushing because I'm, like, I'm six ways from Sunday. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's completely losing. The engine says after bishop takes, knight takes f7 is plus a billion. Because I'm discovered, double, triple, checking him. Okay. So he played bishop d7, so I couldn't unleash my latent potential. Right? And, you know, back in those days... All right, I won't make the condom joke. Okay. So the engine says everything wins. I retreated. Always retreat. Now this is pinned, and this is the worst pawn structure ever, and the queen's defending both things, and I'm on this, so I'm completely winning here. He played a5, which is the engine move. Takes, takes, and now he made a mistake that a lot of lower rated players make. I made a move, it had a threat, and he saw the threat, and he stopped the threat, but I had another threat. So you can't just find one thing and then your job is done. I played queen e4, which has a threat that doesn't matter very much. Then it has a threat that matters very much. And he didn't see the matters very much. And because this was way before Black Lives Matter, so he thought his position was fine. Okay, so he played a4, frankly terrible. And I'm still winning because his pawn structure is shallow and pedantic. This is weak, this is weak, this is weak, this is pinned, this is great. And my king's safer. And some more excuses. I don't know what they are. He played a4, losing immediately, and I played the winning move and he resigned. Can Karen find it? <clears throat> Let's see. He didn't see this move. It's a typical tactic in such situations. By the way, he would have seen it if I wasn't attacking this pawn. But as soon as he saw I was attacking this pawn, he was like, okay, I'll play a4 attacking his bishop, so he can't take the pawn. I mean, that was his thought process. Mm -hmm. Thinking, not his strong suit. Although I think he got a PhD. So he says, attack. I mean, I see if you can get a battery going with your bishop. But right. There's something I have a move that's extra good. Okay, let me see. It's the goodest. Um. I showed this move to, like, this huge roach, and he said, good, good. And then I showed it to the to Emperor Palpatine. He said the same thing. Karen and Emperor Palpatine are like that, son. Except for one thing. It's a juicer. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to hold it up too long. No, hold it up. That's no, good. I don't see it. Yeah. I mean, I do see... It's 9.01, and we're still not getting a million <laughs> viewers from Chess TV. Boo, boo. You can block that. Man, these are the worst answers ever from the chat. I like mean, the I'm, right answer has oh, already been said, then hey, you guys say the worst answer. Maybe Rook D6. Rook uh, D6? Oh, Here? Oh. No. Oh, bishop's attacked. Oh, yeah. Um... If I ever tell Karen the right move, I know exactly what she's going to say. Exactly. <laughs> Exa exactly. So I'm, I'm going to put in the chat what she's going to say because she doesn't read the chat. That's because I get the answer. I spoil it. I don't know it. You have to donate when she says exactly that. <laughs> okay, should I show you? Yeah. Okay, I play queen g6 check. No, I'm not going to say it. 
<laughs> but if I didn't say anything, what would you have said? I didn't see that pin. Yeah. I wrote something a little different. Oh, what'd you say? I wrote, I don't see pins very well. Oh, yeah, I say that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Karen will tell you the evaluation. Nah. See that number? Yeah. God damn. Darn, how do I get better at seeing pins? So bad. Yeah, when Spencer was nine years old, <laughs> he was 4 0 in the K5 championship in Michigan, yeah. and so was his opponent. And Spencer had a piece there, and the guy took it like that. Mm -hmm. It was different, but and then Spencer lost because he just he was like, oh yeah, he knew he knew he just forgot. So then he then it wasn't good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it says I'm plus twenty one. Now some people said like, oh Bishop C two, that threatens this, so Black plays F five. That's how the block. And White's like plus two, mm -hmm. but man, plus twenty one, that's better. Yeah. Yeah, and usually you're not plus 21 in the U.S. Junior because it's under 21. So it's weird. I almost got in trouble. Mm -hmm. One of the funny things from that tournament, Stuart Rachel's, I guess is some kind of OCD, he always adjusts the pieces at all times. He's always adjusting, always. And he was playing John Litvinchuk. And John Litvinchuk made a move, and then he did some, you know, like making sure it was exactly in the center. And then he said, adjust that, and then he hit the clock. <laughs> in 1984, I was 14. So now who is the opponent? Bert Azumakawa. Yeah, he quit chess, I mean, before he was an adult, I think. Yeah. Mm. Yay, we're on chess TV. Hi, chess TV. We're analyzing old games of mine before you were born and your children's children. What's next? Okay, well, king f8 is made in four. Then you play queen here, threatening mate. And then the only way to stop mate is to get access to e7. So you have to move your rook. Otherwise, it's mate. So let's go. Well, if you go here, then this is mate. So the only move is rook e6. There is no other move. Otherwise, it's mate right away. Now you play knight h4, and the idea is to play knight f5. So I'm threatening queen h8 check, knight f5 mate. You can't move your rook because then queen takes here as mate. There's actually nothing to do about check and mate. There's nothing. There's no move that stops it. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go here and I go here or the other way around. Can't stop it. I mean, I wouldn't have done that. I would have taken everything with check and crushed him. So, so this move is better because it doesn't hang mate. Then you, then you always repeat. Okay. Now, you, you, again, you don't want to get mated. It's the same thing. So you take this with check. And then you do it again because it's funny. Yeah. And you, you just keep doing it. It's a draw. Man, that's good. I mean, I'm kidding, but. And then you could play knife f5. And then that's annoying, and this is pinned. So you have to go here, because you have to stop mate. And then your queen's hanging, so that's not good. Yeah. And, the, and then when you take the queen, Karen, then the knight's hanging, and then the rook is attacked. And also, queen here looks pretty good. So the, the truth hurts. And this a pawn's attacked. Terrible. All right. And that was before Rihanna was famous, right? I don't think she was born yet, right? 84, probably not. Hey, I'm not sure. Maybe, about around then. Hey, Siri, when was Rihanna born? Rihanna was born February 20th, 1988, and is 33 years old. Yeah, she wasn't even born, so I can't even make the usual joke. <clears throat> was it Blitz? No, it was the U.S. Junior Championship. It was the slowest game ever. Right, I'm going to go check the tournament again. Is that my best game? That's not one of my top 100 games. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. Yeah. Okay, next, yours, so next. And give me the lowdown. Okay, next is my game with Fabio LaRota. This is from the World Chess Festival in 1988 in St. John, New Brunswick. They had two international events, and I played in both of them. They were both nine rounds, nine. Fabio LaRoda is from Colombia, I think. I think it's Colombia. Could be another country. Anyway, then he moved to the U.S. and he started playing for the U.S. and I actually played him in a U.S. championship. 
even though he's like an FM. <clears throat> but a lot of people got in a couple of years. Anyway, there was a guy there named Jorge Gonzalez, I think, and he was the countryman to Fabio Larota. And one of them, me or Fred Lindsay, we drove up there together with Ray Stone and we stayed in a house for a month. But anyway, one of us played Gonzalez. I think it was Fred. And he said, hey, Fabio Larota is a really unusual kind of name. Does it mean anything? Does it have like some... And, and Gonzalez said, yes. Fabio Larota. Fabio Larota. And he did it like four times. Crazy like Fox News. And Fox News wasn't invented yet. So that's hard to understand. Anyway, I played Fabio Larota three times in my life. I played him twice in the internationals once. And then I played him in the US Championship. And I'm 3-0. and Hooray. Etc. Are all tournaments in Canada slow tournaments? Of course. Yeah. Um, I've done... The, the Yeah, I did... This This is my favorite game against him. I've beaten him three times. This is easily my favorite. Yeah. You told this story? I told it? Yeah. I didn't know I told it. Do I have a tell? I should have a blank face like Peter. Yeah, we might play poker Thursday. We're thinking about it. Mm, Got to do something. If I play poker Thursday at the casino in North Carolina, then I won't stream Thursday. I'm not going to stream tomorrow night either because I'm going to stream 1 to 3 tomorrow, you know, before and after too. Um, you know, like 12, 30 to, you know, whatever, 2.30, 3.30. Um, because I'm uh, playing in the Arena Kings. So, and then I'm teaching a class at 7, so I, I don't want to stream after that. Would you ever play poker on stream? Maybe. You, you can't play poker on stream in the U.S. and in, in Georgia. I could play poker for no money, but that, I don't want to do that. That's stupid. But playing for money, then I have to break a lot of laws, which, you know, I don't mind doing, but not on stream. Yeah. Uh, yay, Chess TV. Go Chess TV. Okay. So I, I didn't do very well because I wasn't very good at chess. And everybody in the tournament was good at chess. So I lost a lot of games. But I won this one. Yeah, proving I'm in Monaco. Also, I thought it was so beautifully anointed here that I was in Vegas. You lied. You told me I was in Vegas. Simpsons reference. Who's on my shirt? Rufus and Doofus. Right? Go Rufus and Doofus. They're the worst. Hooray. Ugh. All right. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm the worst. <clears throat> All right. Back to whatever it is I was doing. I played the Carol Khan because I was in Canada. So I'm always waiting for William Shatner to walk up and say Khan. So I always play the Carol Khan when I'm in Canada. Drew Lou 56 subscribed. <clears throat> Play Ben, the Carol Canada. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Canada, glorious and free. Your country's better than the one that I live in currently. Dun, 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 dun. You have Mr. Sub, et cetera, et cetera. Good song. Uh, okay. So he played the advanced variation. Right, wait, sweetie. Any results? I don't want to get it so should I just straighten that? It's really in your thing there. It's really in there. She got her mask stuck in her earring. I don't it looks like a magic trick, like it got in there and it like that's what it looked like. Man, that's scary. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so nowadays I play C five, but I Bishop F five is the main move, so I played that. Carol Khan. Mm -hmm. He put it in H. Spencer's still playing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Brad and Ethan finished. Right. Do you know what happened? Ethan won. I like Brad's position, but it was complicated. Okay, so I played H5. You can also play H6, but I don't mind losing this pawn because it opens up my rook and the guy has to waste a lot of tempi. You know, it keeps the position okay. 
So he tried to win my pawn, but trying is the first step to failure. So he spent a lot of time trying to win this H pawn, and I'm like, whatever. So I attacked in the center, and he defended, and I kept attacking, always attack. Right, and this is very anti what White wants to do in the advanced Carol Kahn or French. And when Karen has similar positions in the advanced French, when she's white, I say, don't, don't trade queens. And when she's black, I'm like, yeah, because the guy's trying to suffocate you, right? And Karen knows what getting suffocated is like because, you know, we sleep in the same bed. So, yeah. I mean, a much funnier version than me suffocating Karen, much funnier, is one of the top five family guys. When, Karen will agree, when, when uh, Peter's always crushing Lois, and he wakes up and Lois is under him like dying. And um, anyway, so that's not good. So he ends up sleeping with Quagmire, right? And the song plays. Oh, yes. Yeah, the, the song, you know, <laughs> Sarah and the night together. Whoa. I saw that. That's a, that's a great use of a song. Anyway, and then at the very end, she's like, okay, you can sleep in our bed and crush me. And then when he leaves, Quagmire is under him crushed. So it's funny. Okay, anyway, back to what I was doing. You never want to trade queens when you're playing this advanced kind of stuff because you're suffocating black. And with queens on the board, black's king isn't very safe. Black doesn't have a lot of counterplay. With queens off the board, this pawn's weak. And it's a target. I can attack it forever, ever. Forever, ever? Forever, ever. So this is a very poor move as the, the engine shows. It moves no good. Yeah, terrible. Okay. So I played knight h6, because I want to get my knight here. The engine doesn't like it. Okay, engine's wrong, you know, what are you gonna do? Now my rook's open, my knight has this square, my knight and bishop have this square, this pawn's weak forever, etc. Okay, knife f5, king d2, not the best move. King d7, getting the opposition. Never play f3. Yeah. That I knew more things like that, like he, saying that we want black wants the queen off the board. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that. I know, but it's hard to have it all straight. Yeah, up. when somebody <laughs> plays super aggressively, they don't want to trade queens. They want to smash you. And if the I queens know. are off the board, there's no attack, then these pawns can be attacked. But I, I know that part, but I didn't, I don't always sense danger appropriately. I mean, mm -hmm. so and, you, and she lives with me. So, you know. And I lower rated him. I like to keep my queen. <laughs> okay. So he played f3. Now you know who won the game. Bishop d3. Terrible. Let's see. Now, now he has a Sophie's choice. Because his name's Sophie. So the engine clearly understands that king takes c3 loses because of calculation. The human clearly understands that b takes c3 loses because of strategical considerations. If you take with a pawn, this is frankly a ridiculous position for white. And then I play knight here. The bishop is, you know, Lisa Simpson wouldn't like it. This is weak. This is weak. I can attack with f6 if I want to. I can double on the a file. And strategically, this is like very, um, white's very unhappy. Because after this, he's just trying to draw by defending all of his weak pawns. He has no active plan. Although that is the better move, b takes c3, because king takes c3 loses for tactical reasons, which he didn't see. So if king takes c3 doesn't lose for tactical reasons, that's fine. Then, you know, his position's like equal. So he played king takes c3 when that's, that's a very bad move. And I played rook fc8, obviously. And now, you know, I'm, 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 you know, coming to get you, right? Now, the engine wants to take this for tactical reasons, even though it loses a pawn, because, you know, it doesn't like what's going to happen. But he didn't see what was going to happen, so he played the human move, which is bishop b5. Because if we get to some opposite-colored bishop and he trades the rooks on this c-file, there's no reason why he's worse. Okay. And that move is a very bad blunder and loses the game. Obviously, I don't want my knight pinned because mm. I want to play knight everywhere, discovered, check. However, moving my king is too slow. 
it does win. But if I move my king, he gets to do whatever he wants to do. So I played rook a5. Now he has to do something with his bishop. He can't make some random legal move. So the best move, according to the engine, is to take this, which is horrible, but the engine sees why that's the best move. And then uh, this gets checkmated in two moves, bishop c2 check and rook c4 mate. This gets checkmated in two moves because you do it in reverse, rook check and bishop mate. So he has to play king d2. Then rook c2, and any human knows that white's dead lost here because I'm taking all of his pawns and his king's terrible and so forth. And the engine says plus a thousand. Uh, Italian uh, main? No, oh, Maj. Maj? Mag? Mag? Thanks for the sub. Okay. So he made a bad move. And the reason it's bad, according to the engine, is the engine sees all best play. But it's the human move because other moves just obviously lose. This does not obviously lose. A4. Not obviously loses if you're an engine, but if you're a human. Now, in this position, Black has one move that wins. If he doesn't play it, the engine says white's better. Now, while you're looking at it and remembering the video I made on it, <laughs> today, today, about two hours ago, <clears throat> 9.18, an hour and 40 minutes ago, there was a guy who came out. He was pared down, and he was 1,800-something. And I said, how'd you do? He said, I hung mate and won. So, so he lost. <clears throat> and when 1800s play slow chess with you, they never hang mate and one, especially on the internet, because the engine doesn't hang mate and one. <clears throat> All right, now you've watched a lot of my streams, so you know what Black did here. I do. Yeah. And this game was played in 1988 in February in the St. John, New Brunswick. I haven't been there since. It was cold. It was really cold. It was really cold. I can't, I can't explain you how cold it was. That's how cold it was. There's no explanation for it. Who would believe that St. John, New Brunswick in Canada would be cold in February? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if it's a good name. It seems like you might live in the night. Oh, give me the knight. You see my helmet donated 1999. Thank you. You mm -hmm. want to move the knight, but it's pinned. So you can't. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, you sack the exchange. Always sack the exchange. Now, Karen will be shocked. You ready to be shocked? Yeah. Look at the first move. Rook takes b5. You see the evaluation? Um, not really. So. Minus 8. Plus, black's oh, up 8. The other move is equal. It's like a 5. So okay. that's... Right. Okay. So he has to take. Now... Every knight move is reasonable with check, right? Mm -hmm. But only one of them wins. The other ones don't win. So you can go here, 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 here. You got a lot of choice, right? You got eight knight moves, but only one of them wins. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I don't know. 95. George Benson will give me the knight. Knight, knight e5 is the second best move. Black is slightly better. Hmm. Some of you are typing illegal moves, but I know what you mean. Da -da -da -da. Man must like, I'm over 2200. Listen to me. Oh. Let's see. Well, let me look at the other moves. <laughs> see, knight a5. Uh. Mr. Me seeks. Look at me. Yeah, I'm not sure. Now, the reason I played the right move is mm -hmm. I saw it in a game once. It was Gotcha versus Bitch. Yeah. Very famous game. Most of the chat got it. Although, actually, most of the chat didn't get it. Some of the chat got it. Okay, so the answer is knight takes d4 check. The reason is I took a pawn. Mm -hmm. If your king moves, I'm forking you everywhere. And if you take it, then checkmate gives black the advantage. Uh. Okay, so you have a problem. Like these are your other two moves, and those aren't good. Like this walks into a triple fork. So that's, that's bad. So he, whoa. 
didn't realize. Uh, okay, so he played king d2, right? And I forked his king and rook. Now, his rook needs to defend his rook. So he can't play king here or king here because that's a free rook. Mm -hmm. Can't play anywhere else because it's check. So there's only one move that meets all the criteria. King e2. 10,000 cent to do's. Thanks, GM Shadow. I think you're the legend because you're GM Shadow. Thank you. That's good 10,000 cent to do's. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's not because of the money. It's because of the, the thing that does that. I love mm -hmm. that thing. The 100,000 one, I don't like it. I don't like the color. It's like a really weird yellowish kind of color. The 100,000. Then I just like the money, not the thing. But here I like the thing. That's beautiful. Yeah, and then the 5,000 is the blue one. Also good. I like the red one better. Not because it's more money. It's just I like the red thing. Crazy. I have to go make another tournament ring pass in a moment. Okay, so now, okay, if you see a good move, look for a better one. So this is a good move. Mm -hmm. But better is rook c2 check because, as I mentioned earlier, can't go to the back rank because he needs his rook to protect his rook. Then I just take a rook. Mm -hmm. So then there's one move that doesn't do that. Bishop d2. Okay. And then I take with check. He has to keep his king on my rook. Otherwise, I take the rook. So he played here. Now, if he plays king here, which he didn't do, okay, now I check him and he gets off my rook. And then I could take the rook and I'm up a piece. I have a rook and a bishop for a rook. So he has to play king e1. Okay. Now if I take his rook, he takes my rook. So I played rook takes b2, threatening his rook. His rook can go vertical or horizontal. If it goes vertical, doesn't matter where, I check and take his rook. So he has to go horizontal, but he can't go there because I take his rook. So he has to go here, right? There's no other square. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And now I play bishop c2 and his rook's trapped. Which is funny if you have the black pieces. If you have the white pieces, it's not as funny. Yeah. Um, I'm winning anyway, but now I'm winning, 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 winning instead of just winning. Like, this is amazingly winning. The best move is rook h3, which is a funny move, because after takes, takes, I can't check and win his rook. But he found a better move. Well, it's not yeah. a move. He resigned. Yet I'm plus a billion. So that exchange sacrifice worked out pretty good. And he can't even castle, see? He moved his king like 30 times. Yeah. That's one of my favorite games, actually. Because, yeah. you know, I wasn't, you know. I forgot to look at one of my games. Oh, the first game I looked at when I was 14, I played 96.8, and he played 60-something. And he was 2,100. Mm -hmm. I like to analyze. I never analyze these games with, a, like, a, a good engine. Mm -hmm. So I want to see if I played horrible or not. The answer is yes. The moral of the story is never name your kid Fabio. Oh. Eporto76 gifted a sub. Hooray. Thanks for the sub, gifting the sub. And then. Merch approved uh, by Karen. Yay, merch approved by Karen. Thanks, Johnny O. Cotillo. Fantasy versus the Carol Khan. The, I don't know how that works. Usually it only works if Karen pretends to buy something first. That's really strange. That never works the first time. Oh yeah, I was doing that and I forgot. I played 99.1? Wow. I told you guys I used to be good. Now I'm not good. And he played 79.5. Well, I didn't think I played that well. Uh, now you're going to see who you married. How did I play that game? 99.1. Jesus. I didn't think I played that well. I thought I played okay. I thought I played in the 90s, but not 99.1. Who played 99.1? They're cheating. But they couldn't cheat then. It was 88. There's no way to cheat. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Man, I made 18 best moves and three excellent. Four book. One mistake. 
Damn. Every move I made was perfect except one mistake. He did not play as well. Uh, Everybody's about to leave. So damn. I have to come yeah. out. Wow. Okay, now I want to... I didn't analyze this game either. I didn't see how I played. Uh, yeah, I like when I play well because that's better than the, you know, the other way around. Ooh, come on, 99. I didn't know why I played 99 this game. Frankly, ridiculous. Yes. How'd I play? Oh, sorry. Um, a 98.1? Mm -hmm. And he played 45.6, and he's 2250. Mm -hmm. This is when I was 14. People thought I was good. Then I showed them. Yeah. So I'm paraphrasing what Fry said. What Fry said was much funnier, but I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Damn. The first guy I played was the worst. Gray Marmalade gifted five subs. All right, let me see if there's any thing of significance going on. Gray. Oh, oh, okay. Now listen to this. All right. I mean, I mean, when I tell you this, you're going to be confused. You know how when somebody buys something, you never see it, and then sometimes you do Bobberson. Mm -hmm. Somebody bought something when you were gone, and it said it. Oh, it did. That means two people bought something. But I didn't see. But oh, somebody bought something and it didn't show. Oh, right. that's what happened. That's what it means. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. Good. I didn't think of that. Yeah. Obviously, that's, that's why what I happened. always do the fake one. Then I do another fake one to make sure the fake one worked. These people are claiming I'm getting a big raid. Yay. Probably from Naroditsky, probably. Because they said like it's going to be big. So that's, yeah. Yeah, they said Daniel. Yay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Yay. if you type exclamation mark merch, hey, then Bruce you can Jeff. buy stuff. They are. Naroditsky raided with a paltry 1471 because he's a loser. 1471? Come on. Yay. That's all you can do? Thank you. Come on, Daniel. Terrible. I, don't I mean, you, you lose yet. to Andrew Tang in one minute almost half the time. Almost. Terrible. Not quite, but almost. It's Danya. I knew Danya when I was higher rated than him. That's how long I've known Danya. Damn. That, that is a long time ago. Yeah. Also, I knew Luke Von Whaley when I was higher rated than him. Yay. See, if, if Danya's listening, which I can't see that he's listening yet, but if he is listening... This is the most shocking thing I've ever said ever that's true. The other ones are jokes, but this one's not a joke. When I first met Luke Van Whaley, mm -hmm. I was taller than him. That's, I mean, like, Daniel will be like, can't, he'll have to, like, go to a therapist when he hears that. Mm. He'll be like, there's no way that's true. What, you know, but it is true. Hey, there's a question. What does the Euro version, that just means it ships... If you live in Europe or Asia, you want to buy that version because it ships from that region. So hey, the shipping Web. is cheaper. But the designs are the same. It just, we, we have two different vendors to make the shipping cheaper. Mm -hmm. The more you pay, the more you get shipped. Okay, we should add more. We want to add some maybe Australian and Asian <laughs> versions. <laughs> Yay, go me. If anybody's seen Luke Von Whaley in person, you'll know how crazy that statement was, that I'm, I was taller than him at some point in my life. But, but I was. Mm -hmm. Higher rated, you can believe, because when people are like, I was higher rated than Caruana when I beat him. You can believe it, because you know people used to be six years old. But imagine if I said Caruana was taller than me. That doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It's never happened, but if it did happen, you'd be shocked, right? But. I was taller than Luke Von Whaley. Yeah, we added some. Hey, let me just interject here for a minute. Hey, Marty. Since so we had some merch mm -hmm. questions. We did add some new merch recently. You should check it out. Some women's T-shirts, even a cute little onesie, some masks that say Roar on for Kevin it. Hart says you're three good. You're not too good. You're three good. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Thank you. It was in uh, 1988 and 89. Yeah, by 90, he was taller than me. 89 was probably when he became taller than me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Five foot nine. Marty's one of the heads of uh, ICC. Mm. He said hi. Oh, hey. He's slumming. 
Flarty Party 927, 350. Woman, I told you not to give Farty Party 350. Now he's going to come back. Don't give him tree fitty. She thought if she gave him tree fitty, he would go away because he asked for three. But that's not true. Now he's going to come back for another tree fitty. I got to go for it. Hey, Jim Sintaku. I'll be back, but I'm, I'm on duty. Like, but, duty. By the way, Karen has no idea what I'm talking about. Right? I, I'm just thinking about the fact that I need to go out here for a minute. But the tree fitty. No? The South Park. <laughs> 350, thanks, Jafari. The more you donate, the more money I have. All right. And then Dankle gifted a sub. Good, good. Kevin Hart subscribed. The Kevin Hart. Go, Danya. How tall is Danya? Like 6'2 or 6'3? It's pretty tall. It's not as tall as Von Whaley or Kramnik. But he's tall. Seven one no. No six two yeah. Somebody like Malakov. It might have been Malakov. He was. I don't know if I'm thinking of the right guy. He's like six seven. Donner was very tall, but I never saw Donner. I never met him, but he was very tall. Yeah, Von Whaley is about six four six five, maybe six six. Yeah, Naradinsky's not five eleven. Google can say whatever it wants. You're always quoting the internet, which is always wrong, instead of people who've actually met them. Terrible. You're all banned. No, if I'm willing, he's not 6'10". Oh, yeah, Indich is tall. That's right. Yeah, short's just like 6'2 or something. Yeah. No, Naroditsky's not 6'4", 6'5". If I'm willing, he's not 6'7". Terrible. Gary Oldman, that's not how you spell Gary. Terrible. Yeah. Smyslov hasn't been alive for a long time. Tall was not very tall. Okay, next game. You're so next. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, it's my game with Kai Uwe Schiffer. I show this game a lot, but it's been a long time on why you shouldn't play for a draw. Okay, so hopefully... Uh, Hold on, I gotta think of the joke. Hopefully, Kangaroo's not here because this guy's German. Yay, thanks for the few cent to do's, Kate, 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 and Lee. Yeah. Short was tall, tall as Washington. 6'8. Six, Man, it sounds like lies. Lies. Okay, so this was played in the Netherlands before you guys were born. This is a line that I've had a lot with black. I've had this position a dozen times or more with black in slow tournaments. And I was totally crushed in Philadelphia many years ago by Zviad Azoria. I mean, he crushed me in this line. Horrible. But this was before the Azoria game. Okay, and this is all theory. And white's a little better because this knight's not very good. Okay, 94. And the thing is, even though white's better because my knight on a6 is so bad, he was clearly playing for a draw at every move. Like, how can I draw? That's, that's not a way to play chess. And what I mean is... you. I mean, nobody's going to listen to this advice, but you, you shouldn't play for individual achievement in chess. And what people do is they, they want to tell their friends, I drew, and then, you know, whatever, I won against GM or I am or whatever. And the other 800 games that they lose, they don't talk about that. Also, we need a couple of subs for the hype train. Otherwise, it's going to die. You got 15 seconds. Um, your goal as a chess player should be to win. It should be to get better at chess. It should be to have interesting games with your opponents. It shouldn't be that I'm going to play 10,000 games in my life. I hope in one of them I draw a GM. That's not, that's not how you get better. That's just silliness. 
But that's what everybody does. Yeah. Yay, Ron the Drummer subscribed, Montana Chess subscribed, SHMA subscribed, and Jafari gave a thousand sentences, but it was all too late. But I did get a level one emote, so that's good. I got something out of it. Yay, look at that new emote. I'm the best. See, <clears throat> there's two things you can do as far as chess is concerned. You can play chess, or you can not play chess. And if you want to get better at chess, then you should play chess. So if you play a 10 move draw, or a five move draw, or a 20 move draw, then you're not playing chess anymore. You stop the game. That's not how you get better. But people don't care about that. They're like, I drew a 2300. Traveling Chef 78 donated 999. It's a much better achievement if you play somebody much higher rated than you or has a better title, and the game ends in king versus king if you don't win. Then you played a real game and went all the way to the end, and it was a draw. But if you like have a slight advantage on move 11 and offer a draw and they take it, that's not something to be proud of. That just shows when you have an advantage, you're afraid of your opponent. That's what it shows. Now, my opponent who has an advantage here and has the white pieces is just trying to draw. That's, even if he draws, that's, that's, that's not how you get better at chess. You shouldn't play chess with the goal of not playing chess. That shouldn't be the goal. I drew in 11 moves. My opponent was higher rated. Yay. Terrible. Okay. If you're afraid of people, then don't play chess. Like, I don't want to play him. He's good. Then don't play chess. Go play golf. Like, don't, you don't have to play chess. If you're going to play chess because you enjoy playing chess, then you should play chess. You shouldn't stop playing chess. Terrible. Right. And what happens is, a lot of people will see Grandmaster draws at the very top level and they try to emulate the top players. And those people, if you can call them people, like Magnus, Hikaru, etc., mainly etc., you know, so and Caruana and Nipo and Sfiddler and so forth, they got good because they didn't play 10 move draws. Now that they are good, they might play a 10 move draw here or there, or they might play the Bond Cloud. Okay, whatever. They're just being silly. And I'm kicking the camera because I'm so mad. But when you're an up and coming person, if you can call yourselves people, and you're getting better, taking quick draws doesn't make you better. It makes you a chicken. It makes you used to taking quick draws. And Grandmaster Alex Scherzer, who you never heard of, his coach told him when he was very young, he's not allowed to take a draw or offer a draw. Montana Chess donated $500. It could be $50, and he made a mistake and put an extra zero. If that happened, let me know, and we'll, we'll take care of it. If it didn't happen, thanks. Yeah. We had an accidental $2,000 donation once. The guy meant to donate $20, and he thought it was 20.00. So that was like three, four years ago. Yay, $500. Yeah, if you ever make a mistake like that, then, you know, just let us know and we know how to refund and stuff. Hooray, $500. It could have been 50 cents. You can't donate 50 cents, it won't let you. It could have been $5. It could have been $50. It could have been $5,000 and he made a mistake. Thanks for the $500. No mistake. Thank you. You're the best. Somebody in Montana has $500? Wow. Wow. Pretty interesting. Thanks for the 100 sensitives. Wow, that's the, is that the biggest donation I ever had that was like that? Might be. I think I got it once in, in like four years of streaming. I might've had that once, maybe. I think the biggest donation I ever got that was real, like it wasn't an accident, was somebody gave me 100,000 sensitives. That's a thousand dollars, I think, or close, yeah. Yeah, the $2,000, we just refunded them. Yeah. yeah. The best channels? Wow, that was great. A $500 donation is, is shocking. But not appalling, just shocking. Usually in Danya's stream, you should hang out here more often. All right, so are you, are you living in Montana or from Montana? Man, I typed a lot of stuff, but it didn't happen. Thanks, G Fuels, Rim... Tim, Stip, Shot, something. 
Uh, I have a funny story about Montana. So, uh, did that work in Montana? Yeah. I'm confused. I, I thought I, I did something. I don't know if it worked. Oh, he's already a, no, not a moderator. No. <laughs> so stupid. Why am I so stupid? Okay. Can you be a moderator or in a VIP or you can only be one? Can you be both? I don't think you can be both, but I don't know. You can't? Okay, well, he's a VIP now, so must have got rid of him as a moderator. Both? I don't think you can be both, yeah. It's better to be a VIP. Moderator is annoying. You know, you're like, ah, oh, I got to do stuff. All right, thanks again. It stopped the stream dead cold because I'm, I'm in shock. Yeah. Yay, five hundred dollars. That's that's yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't tell you my Montana story. And the Michigan Open in nineteen seventy nine, which was the biggest Michigan Open ever, had two hundred and fifty three players. I actually have a lot of stories from that tournament. I have more interesting stories. But since you're Montana chess, anyway, um a guy there was from Montana. And he was paired with my dad, and my dad was like 2,200. And he said, he was 1,700. I think he was the highest rated player in Montana. And he said, I've never played a master before. Am I supposed to just resign right away? <laughs> he was like, what, what's a master? And the game ended in a draw. So he drew, drew his first master. Amazing. That's a lot of Indian food. It is. I mean, I got a good Indian food story, and then... Uh, and then uh, I'll, uh, I'll continue with the game. So in Belgium in 1988, there was a team tournament. And our team was uh, Luke Winans on one. I don't know who was two. It was either me or Michel Jadoul. Then the other one was three. And Patrick Van Hulen was four. Patrick Van Hulen now plays for Monaco, but he used to play for Belgium. He used to live in Belgium. He might still live in Belgium. I don't know. Um, anyway, Patrick Van Hulen was was wealthy and we won the tournament and he said, I'm going to take you guys out to dinner. He says, and call your wives and your children, your friend, whatever. So he had a car phone, which I'd never seen before because it was in Belgium in 1988 and we were calling anyway. He called like the fanciest restaurant and they're closed on Sunday. So then he called this Indian restaurant called La Rana, which I think Rana's elephant, but this story is from 88, so I, it could be I'm just making it all up. And we went to the restaurant, and there was a lot of us there, at least 20. Because, like, everybody we knew went to the dinner. And he was ordering bottles of wine and bottles of water, which were expensive, and all the food we could eat. And I was trying to guess how much it cost. And I, I guessed, like, $2,200 was my guess. Man, that was fantastic Indian food. Just fantastic. I'm not sure if it was in Brussels or a suburb. I think it was in a suburb. But man, it was so good. It was so good. Uh, the truth hurts. Okay. Uh, yeah, these stories are much better than chess. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> What's Winans doing? I don't know. I haven't seen Luke Winans since I left in 1992. He was beating Carlson uh, a few years ago, but he lost. He had a winning position. Yeah, he, um, he plays for the Belgian Olympic team sometimes. I don't think he does anymore. Yeah. I don't know how much it costs. I was guessing... Now that I've had dinners with Rex, it doesn't seem as impressive. But at the time, I was like 18, 19 years old. So I was really impressed with him paying for everybody. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's get back to the game. Knight e4, never play f3. So now you know the result. Take, take. K 
King D7. And the engine still likes white. Because, you know, my knight's stupid. Why is it so stupid and everything? Rook AB1 is a very strange move. I can't even explain Rook AB1. Like, I can't explain what he was thinking. <clears throat> I don't know. And the engine says Rook AB1 stupid, and now it's completely equal. But I don't know what, why he did it. Okay, Knight B4, Knight D4, Knight C6, and he always trades. And this should be a draw, but black's better because I can attack this, I can attack this. Hopefully I can push someday. And he doesn't have a lot of plans. And he's playing sort of passively. So I'm, I've gone from like slightly worse to slightly better. My king's better than his. Pawn's weak, his rook's not very good. Rook c4, a5. Okay. And are we in time trouble still? Uh, yeah, okay. He played g3. He thought we were playing connect four. And I played g5 because I want to win. And, you know, he's just chilling, you know, like a villain. He's gelling like a felon. Okay, so I played g5, and he put it in h, and I just made a waiting move, like, it's your move. And in this position, he blundered, and I don't blame him for blundering, because this is very difficult. And many years ago, when I looked at this with an engine, I was shocked with what he should do. I mean, I was really shocked. And I had to analyze it like really deeply. And I was like, oh, and it would be really hard for anybody to play correctly here, except for an engine, because it looks really dumb. Like the way that's the right way to play just looks losing immediately. So I don't blame him for losing this position. And because he made the losing move, there's only one move that doesn't lose. It made, it was, in, it's interesting for me to show you. Um, yeah, so this looks really, really stupid. Because I trade rooks, and I go here, and you have double pawns that can never make a pass pawn, and I have a pass pawn. So I can't even imagine that this is a draw. This just looks like you resign. And when I go here, and you defend your pawn, I can go here. So to me, this is unbelievable this is a draw. And not only is it a draw, white doesn't have to play very accurately. White can play king here or here and draw, which is weird. Okay, we'll play a normal move. We'll just play normally. And then, okay, king g4 looks like a normal move. King f2. And I'm like, how can this be a draw? I'm on this. He has to defend it. I got a passed pawn. How is this a draw? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just like shocked. Okay, so let's play the way that I think would win, e5. And it says every move draws. Very embarrassing. Okay. So to me, this looks like an easy win. And the reason it's not, it's very funny. It's very funny why this doesn't win. Because black has no threat here. So white makes a waiting move. King e4, a4, doesn't matter. And after takes, king f4 draws. Because if the black king moves, white's king moves with it. And it's a draw. And if, you know, a4, then a3. Only way to try to win, because, you know, this, this ain't going to win, is to play king h5 and then try to do something. But h6 is not good. That's the only way you can try to win. Now you're losing. Yeah. And white's winning here. Takes and goes over here. So that's, that's the only way for white to draw is to lose all of his king side pawns and play king f4 and draw. I mean, that's, that's impossible to find. Jesus. Okay. So instead he blundered and lost the game. This is the only move that draws. I, I still don't believe it. I take, I have a pass pawn and it doesn't matter. And the answer is it doesn't matter. 
ridiculous. And you have to you have to analyze it with an engine because it's black has more than one way to try to win. The engine's like nothing. Draw. It's been saying that for years. So seeing 20, 30 moves ahead is helpful in chess. That's why engines are good. Okay, so he took, and I took, and now he's lost. Doesn't matter what he does now. Um, difference is, if he plays the same way, I, I can win doing this. I can win two different ways, but he can't let me come in here. So, yeah. War games subscribed. Good, good. Okay, so he played king e3. And now I calculated forever. I calculated all the way to the end of the game and more because this was when I was younger and I could play chess. There's no way I could calculate this now. Zero. But I was 21. What month was this? It was Groningen or Wykenze? Groningen. So that's 21. E L Z 1 G subscribed. Hooray. The more you subscribe, the more. Yeah, that's right, Man Moth. Okay. So everything was forced, and I calculated all the way to the end and more, and then I won. So I played C4, which is explosive. He can't let me play C3, because then he would be PO'd. So he has to take. Now he can't let me do this. So let's play king d2. Okay, now I'm just going to win in a shallow and pedantic way. So he has to try to get counterplay. So when I win these pawns, he can queen this pawn. Otherwise, I just take all his pawns. Okay. And when I calculated, I realized he only has one move here. Pushes his a pawn, I get back in time, and then my two pawns win. Because he can't take the back one because the front one queens. So he has to play king c5. Now we both queen, because it can't stop each other from queening. I queen first. Now if I can trade queens, I win, because I queen. And he can't stop me from trading queens. So obviously king c6 walks into a skewer. And so he has three other moves to consider. He played king b5. If he plays king b4, I play this check. And now... If he plays king here, king here, or king here, this check trades queens and wins. And king king here, oh, and king here, lose the queen to this. So the, the engine already dunks his mate. If he plays king c4, it's the same. Queen d4 check. King has to go here. Queen d5 check wins. So you play king b5. And then I played here. And now he resigned. If he goes to the a file, I... I check and take his queen. If he goes here, I play queen g2. And if he goes here or here, it doesn't matter which one, queen d4 wins again as previously stated. So, and I saw that in this position. And so I knew that c4 was winning. It's not the only way to win, but I, I used to be able to calculate it now. How did uh, Spencer do? Well, let me see. So he won, but he, yes. he said he lost a piece. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like him. You said Ethan be Brad. That's not what it says. Oh, I thought that's what he said. He was whispering. Yeah, because I thought Brad had a good position. Oh, okay, good. I'm not saying I thought Brad won, but. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Ben Gartoon beats beat Sanjay. Wow. And then what else am I surprised at? Ovi beat Jill. Yay! We had we had 18 boards tonight. No draws. Rawr. That is that actually is somewhat amazing. Right, Karen? There's no draws. Wow. Good, good. What did John say about his game? All right. I got a surprise for you when you come in. I didn't forget. It's a good surprise. But it's a good surprise. Should I just yell it out to you? Oh, we got a very, 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 very large donation. Hey, 
Yeah. Where it goes, da 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 Right? I can only sit for a second. Yeah. I've What's a good donation? Da, 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 da. Um, da, I don't know. Da, da, da. I mean, I, I don't know. Just tell me. Five hundred. <laughs> really? Wow, that is good. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever had better than Who that. Who did that? Well, I made him a VIP and a mod, and you can't. So he left because he was mad. Mm -hmm. He's Montana, Montana something, Montana chess. Really? Yeah, I think Montana chess. What's that? He usually goes to Danya's stream and gives him all his money. But Danya raided me with a party of one billion. <laughs> so then he had to watch my stream and he was like, no. And he actually was donating to Danya. And right before he pushed the button, I got raided. So he, it was hey, a still there. total accident. Thank you, Monty. Yeah, I, I knew you were still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a total accident. He was like, oh, no, that's for Danya. No, boo. Hey, Trumpet. I'm Luke sure. Winans has a Twitter. He's tweeted once. <laughs> well. <laughs> Luke went on. He was the best player uh, in Belgium when I was there. Yeah. So what are you guys doing? I still have to close close down here. So this is what I calculated. This this position. This is a game I played in 1990. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's what I calculated. Here, take, take. Here, 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 here. Now I'm gonna win if I get my king in front of his pawn. So he has to play king c5 to stop me. Then we both queen. Then I check and I force the trade of queens. And then he resigned. Because now I can trade queens. And I saw this and more. He resigned here. But if he goes here, if he goes to the A file, I check and take his queen. Mm -hmm. If he goes here, I check and win his queen. So he has to go here or here. And then I go check. And then queen here, check, a trades queens, and I win. So I was showing him that. Mm. That's when I was younger and I could see far ahead. Now I, now I can't see Vishwa nothing. Danya has good impressions. Yes. Okay, let's see how I played. I always I forget to see that. how I played. I'm guessing I played about 91 this game. I, there's no way I played in the high 90s because it didn't like my position for a long time. It was mad at me. So 91 is the best I can hope for. Let's see. Hmm? So what I like is when Danya gets all philosophical like at 3 in the morning. On his stream. How did I play? <laughs> it says, um, both of you played well. How did I, how did I play? Uh, 99? Yeah. What? Point zero. They kept saying my game sucked. Mm -hmm. 33 best moves, 3 excellent, 2 good, 6 book, 1 inaccuracy. Mm. Damn, 99. I used to be better than I thought I was. I knew I was better than I am now, but not that good. He played 96.2. I guess we were both cheating in 1990 somehow. Not sure how. I think in 1990, computers you could cheat with, like, they didn't have them on your phone. They, they didn't play 99. They, they didn't play 95, maybe. You have a crush Damn. on Danya. Damn. That's two people talking about how handsome Danya is. Who, me and you and him? <laughs> I played 99? Oh, talking about it? Damn, no. I played 99 that game. The engine said I had a worse position like the first 18 moves. Man. Yeah, Chad asked me one time when Ben went to the bathroom and we were streaming. When Ben was in the bathroom, they wanted me to say, who was more handsome, Daniel or Eric Rosen? And you refused to answer. I did. Hmm. I said one was more handsome than the other, but I would never say. But I know what she said. Never. So if you donate enough, I'll tell you what she said. No. Mm -hmm. What if somebody donates a thousand dollars? Still can't. <laughs> thousand? No. What if Eric Rosen and Danya both keep donating until one donates higher? Then I say it's them because it's a, like a, an auction. Say me, no, say me. And then whoever I don't, whoever gives me more, that's that's. Who I don't it is. need the money for that. I don't want to say They're just the same thing. People try to get me to say who's the better looking vote test. I will never say. <laughs> We can just have a poll, and then then we'll know. Mm -hmm. All right, back to whatever it is I was doing. All right, I'm going to go keep straightening and closing down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, now I have a shock to the system. This is not a joke. I'm not kidding. This is the game where I crushed Peter Heine Nielsen. And I never even realized ever that I beat him. He was just a random kid. He was 17. I was higher rated than him. And then at some point, 
when they said he was Magnus's coach or second, I was like, is that the guy that I beat a thousand years ago? And it was. I beat him in Capelle La Grande, which is a suburb of uh, Dunkirk. Uh, it was either 90, 91, or 92. I don't know. I mean, the end of the game is really nice. The end of the game. The, the game itself is, it's going to say I played like 10, but yeah. Okay. So I actually played him once before he was a well-known person, if you can call him that. Uh, yeah. Yay, 4,000 viewers. Okay. So I'm white, and it's a King's Indian. Okay. So I've played several different variations against the King's Indian. Very rarely did I play this. I probably played this two or three times in my life and didn't like it. So I don't play that anymore. Always retreat. Always play e takes f5. Good, good. And the engine says we're playing fine. It says everything's good. Hooray. The engine wanted to play f3, but that's absurd. <clears throat> Never play f3. Yeah, it thinks white's better now. It wants him to play, you know, e4, which is not good for his bishop on c8. So that's probably why he didn't do it. Now at least his pawns, you know, can move forward and a bishop might get out someday. Yeah, but the engine likes white a little bit. Put it in H. Yeah, C5 is just like a nonsensical move, giving me a passed pawn. That move doesn't make any sense. Now he's close to losing. Roar! Matt Larson. When I was younger, I played much more aggressively than I do now, I had no fear. I was like, that's the right move, and then I would play it. I'd analyze a lot, but I can't analyze now. So and I'd just sit there and don't move and my flag falls. The engine says it's fine. Okay, he said taking is right. Okay, I get the E4 square. Good, good. It doesn't like bishop G5. Now it says it's equal. doesn't like king h8 it says that's terrible it says if he takes on f6 it's equal i probably thought i was better because my knight can go here and this knight's stupid and all these pawns are weak but yeah his move is actually bad and he should feel bad yeah that that wasn't good i don't know why he did that okay and we're in really bad time trouble here so if he takes my bishop not only is it checkmate but it wins his queen Always retreat, setting up for the next game. And I, during the game and afterwards, I haven't thought about this game in over 20 years. I really like that I switched my knights like that. Yeah. Also, knights like this. Yeah, now my queen's better. I got f7. I still got the blockade. Okay, he played king g8. Yeah, the engine likes bishop f6. Get rid of those two bishops. I mean, so I'm down a pawn, but these are great. These are terrible. My king's safer than his, etc. Knight c6 is crazy like Fox News. He was hoping takes takes, and he has counterplay. The engine does want me to take, but I was in time trouble. This move is also okay. Bishop f5 is best. Knight g3 is best. He can't take my knight because knight takes wins his queen. I'm threatening this and this and this. So bishop d7 is forced. And then I played the other knight to e4. This is the most fun I've ever had. I keep getting that knight on e4. Now we're in really bad time trouble here. So, you know, some mistakes could happen. Always retreat. Then he got his knight to d4. Forking his king and pawn. He went up, which is very bad. Should play queen f7, but probably he's losing in any case. d6, rawr. Knight c6 is a blunder. He should play queen e6. He can't play queen g7 because this is incredibly hanging. So he has to play here. d7. Doesn't want me to queen. So he took it, obviously. And that, that 
that allows force to mate. The bishop was defending e4. Now he's going to be moving on up to the king's side. The only other move is to give his queen away. So he has to go here. Queen f2. I have forced mate if I play king g2 or king g1, it says. But we were in time trouble. So this looks pretty good in time trouble. This is winning too. He has to play king h3, but he didn't. King h3 is the best move. And then I'm only like plus eight. <laughs> Man, king h3 in time trouble, nobody would ever play that ever. He's still losing, but I mean... All right, so he played queen e8. He's probably trying to give his king an escape route. So he gets his queen out of the way. But now he gets mated. Yeah. And then after here, I only have one move that's mate and one. It looks like I have several mate and ones, but I only have one. Who can get it first in the chat? H3 is the natural square. Queen H6 is not mate. Several people said queen H6. That's only mate after here. Knife F2, checkmate. Man, those knights did a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, after this game, Magnus asked if I wanted to be a second. And I asked Karen, she's the business, and she said no. So he had to hire this guy instead. Terrible. Yeah, I'm guessing I didn't play 99 this game. <laughs> that we were in time trouble the last 10 moves, so it was very exciting. And... I didn't even know that I beat the guy who became good later until I like looked. I was like, oh, yeah, I beat him. I mean, he'd been 2650 or so for years before I realized that that was the person I beat. You know, you play a lot of people who are 21, 22, 2300. And obviously, you know, I remember beating Fabi because he's, you know, top five in the world for a long time. But I didn't even know if this was the same one. I thought Peter Nielsen, that's a, that's a normal name. But yeah, he was 17. When he was 17, why not not mate him instead of mate him? After queen h6, he has queen h5. After knight f2, the game's over. Mate in one's better than mate in two. This was move 40, so I saved him from losing on time. Uh, Leslie Nielsen's good. Okay, this is going to be the worst game I ever played on this stream. I tried to find interesting games you haven't seen before. No, it's going to say I played 87 or something. I'll hang my head in shame. Shame! He played better than I did. I played 86.3 and he played 87.2. Boo! Time trouble. All right, so we're leaving in about five minutes. No, boo. <laughs> Here's how I checkmated Magnus Carlsen's second. King is good. Yeah. Let me show you my favorite part of the game. Okay, you see this square and you see these knights? Mm -hmm. Just pay attention to that because it's really fun. Just look at the knights. I'm not done. I got more knights things happening. No. And then in the end, I played queen f2 mate because I want to play knight here again, but his bishop's here. So I decoyed it because I'm going to queen. Yeah. No. Mate. I was working on my night moves that game. Yeah. That was pretty nice. I thought so. Although he wasn't, he was like FM and he was 17. Mm -hmm. I know he was. But then he got good and I didn't. Oh well. Truth hurts. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have the Ferric Portish game? Probably I don't. Um, I might have it in my home in the thing of score sheets that I have. I was white in an exchange King's Indian, and I just got destroyed. I castled queenside, and he just roasted me. Terrible. Uh, knights better than bishops. Yeah. Obviously, the most famous d7, sacking the passed pawn, uh, was the Kasparov win against... I think he was playing a guy whose name I can't pronounce. Y-R-O-L-A, or... Y R O J A or L J A? So Every, Finland, I think. Everybody got the Bob Seeker reference. Trey Jalen Brown subscribed. Uh, Lee Chess Rings 1150. Damn. This is pretty good. Thanks for the sub, Trade Jalen Brown. Does Wait. he play for Boston now? Who does he play for? 
Who's Jalen Brown play for now? Do you know? I don't even know who that is. He basketball player. <laughs> Boston. Yeah. How come Boston is the worst team ever? Terrible. Why is the East so bad? Philly's no good. Brooklyn's no good. And those are the two best teams. They're just terrible. Damn. Another hundred dollars. That is funny. That's the guy who owes me a hundred. He's giving me like a dollar so far. One set at a time. <laughs> yeah. Boston's the sports capital of the world? No, Boston is not the sports capital of the world. But nice try, says the guy from Boston. Frankly, ridiculous. I've never seen such a ridiculous statement ever on the internet of all places. Okay, you're so next. Okay, so this is my game with Ilza Rubin, RIP. She died in a car accident uh, in Riga when she was 44. And she was 33 this game. And she was a WIM. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of the craziest games I've ever played. I don't remember the game, how accurate it was. I just remember it was crazy. Yeah. Uh, ben, tell best. Ben he's the best. Aww. That's from the I'm guy gonna who, have who didn't. To, yeah. I'm going to have to miss the game. Okay, so bye, yeah. enjoy, because I have to put, put my son to bed. See you guys. Yeah, Brooklyn bad. Everybody's bad. And they should feel bad. Bye, Karen. It's Karen. <sighs> hey, Spencer won. Archer won. And earlier today, my son and my daughter were streaming at the same time. Good, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny. Karen's lived in Philly and Boston. She loves Philly, but Boston, she's like, eh. But, but Philly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this game was, was nuts. But, you know, I was young and brash or something. So I was like 21, 22 when I played this game. He, she played the Dutch. And the, the game was just like totally nonsense. It was really complicated. I remember that. I remember thinking forever on a couple moves. Always sack a pawn. All right. So these moves don't make a lot of sense, but they're interesting. So that's you know, that's important. Bishop f4. Bishop f4 is actually a good move because I got knight g5 now. Queen b6. Rook b1. Now, when I played rook b1, you thought I was defending my pawn. But thinking is not your strong suit. So knight g5. Now I figured she's not going to castle kingside because her bishop's here. So b4, rawr, the point of rook b1, b5, etc. Now she can't castle anywhere. The engine says I'm better here. That position makes no sense. Always retreat. Put it in h. b5. The engine really hates b5 because of c5. It says this is a terrible move. And she played e5 which is crazy like Fox News. But she's unleashing the latent potential here, and she's all over me. She's threatening everything. I mean, what what's not attacked? This, this. So, you know, looked like it made sense. Takes, 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 take. Rook b7, and now I'm plus four because her king is on e8, and it's never going to castle. So now she's crushed. Uh, Pasta Peter subscribed. Yeah, now she's just crushed. So queen d8 and e5 was very bad. But c5 would have been, she would have been fine. You shouldn't open the center with your king there. Not good. Yay. Knight e4 is x-clam, by the way. The engine loves that move. Okay, she took. I took. She has to move her queen because her queen's attacked. Bishop takes e5. Engine doesn't like that. Oh, now the engine does like it. It said, oh, never mind. I like that. Yeah. So one of the variations that it happened. Uh, no. <clears throat> A sample variation is takes. Knight d6. Queen takes. Bishop g6. Attacking her queen. So she has to play pawn takes. And then if she takes with the queen, checkmate. 
I remember the variation from the game. That was pretty cool. Okay, so she took with the bishop, because then I don't, I can't do that. Bishop c4. If she plays queen c4, queen d7 may again. So she attacked my queen. Bam! As first played in the game, gotcha versus bitch. That move's actually a blunder. And after that, I'm barely winning. I'm like better. <clears throat> Rook f8's winning easily. Queen f3's winning easily. So I should check, take, and then move my queen somewhere. Queen d2, a move I would never find with this idea. Queen b4 check. And then it says I'm plus 1,000. Because queen b4 check's hard to stop. Also, queen f2 check wins. So this is immediately winning. My move's a blunder, but it was cool. I was young. I was brash. Yeah. Okay, so here it says, like, I'm better, but it's a draw. But she lost pretty quickly, if I remember. Time trouble. Bishop b8, question mark. That's not a good move. It's hard to play black here because my rook's on the 7th. Those are no good. This is great. This is, this, you know, I got, I got all kinds of stuff I can do. And she's just defending. Well, now it actually says that I'm, that I'm winning. Change its mind. She played here. I pinned. She unpinned. Rook b1. Hooray. Bishop c4. Rook b4. Yeah, and this is funny. After g4, her knight doesn't have a lot of good places to go. If it goes to g7, I'll play knight c5. And rook b7 check is going to win. Yeah, and then she attacked my rook. And then she resigned here. But, I mean, that game was insane. And she was in really bad time trouble. And this is move 31. So, yeah. This is the kind of games I used to play when I was younger. Because I like to calculate and play crazy. But some of my moves weren't too good. But it was really hard to play for both sides. Now I like to play really boring and be slightly better. And win in 90 moves. There's no tactics. But back then, I liked to play like that. Now I play like this in one minute chess because, you know, it's on the internet, so I don't care. Yeah, bishop c4, queen h3 any good? Let's see. Queen h3, putting it in h. Um, well, there's no threat for black, so no. It says everything is plus 1,000. Um, this is the best move which doesn't make any sense at all. And the reason is I want to go queen here and here. So I'm never going to see that. That's plus 19. This is plus 11. Just taking this. It wants, it wants her to sack her queen for my rook. After this, it says this is plus a million. I mean, this is mate. So yeah, that's not good. And then it also says this move is winning. Check and then take threatening mate. It says they're all plus a thousand. So yeah. Yeah, having your king here and your rooks here and it's move 22 and my rooks on the seventh and my rooks on the open F file. My queen's on the open D file. My knight is good. My bishop is good. Bishop's on G8. And it's not good. I can't believe I played rook b1, b4, b5, bc, rook b7. You don't see that very often. Especially after queen b6. She went back to, to d8. Never going back. Okay. So let's see how badly I played. That game was so complicated. I'm guessing we just both played bad. That's what happens when it's too complicated. Then the engine goes, no, no. I played 97.6, which I don't believe, and she played 84.5. I played 97.6. That was a pretty exciting game. One player took the advantage and never let go. Man, it's like Danny Wrench made this so it would say I played well when I didn't. Yay. Yeah, I used to play crazy like Fox News. Now I just play crazy. Man, I used to calculate a lot and fast. Now I calculate nothing and slow. It's similar. It's got the same words in there, some of them. 
Hooray! And so forth. What about knight takes g3? I don't know when you mean, like, the queen's hanging. So I assume you mean after some move knight takes? I don't know what move. Let's play here. That's the engine move. The knight g3, this is forced mate. Rook check, and then queen a3 is mate, because I'm going to go here mate. So you have to give up everything along the way. And also you have to be wasted on the way. So much checkmate underneath the bridge. Queen d3 threatens check and queen here check. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Now let's do this and play knight takes g3 and see what happens. Check. Bishop takes. Check. And then I take this with check. Yeah, so that's uh, not good. All the tactics work in my favor because the king is here and the rooks are here. So every every tactic works. They all work. Etc. Yeah. Uh Penniless Perez subscribed. Now he's really penniless. Yeah, I mean, as I got older, I couldn't see anything. I sit there for three minutes and I'm like, oh, the bishop's attacked. I mean, you know, ridiculous. Let me tell you how good I was. I don't have to tell you one thing, and then you'll know. I only got to tell you one thing. I don't have to show you games from 30 years ago where I beat somebody. Anybody can do that. In 2007-ish? Eight? No, no. 2000? No, I'm wrong. 2005, I think. About 2005, about, Nakamura won his first U.S. championship. And I think when the tournament ended, I think it was over, but I could be wrong. We played one minute because we never played one minute before, and we were famous one-minute players. And we played on a real board. At that time, ICC was the big chess online thing, and we played on ICC a lot, but we never played on a real board. So we played on a real board. Then the scores were reported to ICC what the score was. It's funny. And uh, we played 17 games of one minute, and I won nine to eight. And that was when Akaru was insanely fast physically because he was like 17. Yeah. And then, you know, now I would get zero out of 17 because I had no good. But, but, you know, back then it was competitive. And... Uh, then about eight years ago, no, I'm sorry, 10 years ago, it was 10 years ago, I played Hikaru at some thing, like we give Simuls, at and I don't know. And we played five one-minute games because the crowd was, and I said, well, I'm going to lose 0-5, so, but all right. And, and he beat me three to two. So he was not happy about that. N not in 2011. Not happy... I mean, we both thought he'd win 5-0. I think I was trying harder than him because there was a lot of people watching that want to get embarrassed 5-0. Now I would, I would lose every game forever if we played over the board one minute. I would lose 1,000 in a row. I'm old and terrible. Okay, back to whatever it is I was doing. This is one of my favorite games because even though it was played in 1992 in, in France in Capelle de Grand, it's the style that I play now. Very boring taking advantage, like very Karpovian, right? And I don't think Magnus was born yet. So it wasn't, you know, any kind of, uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Not very Carlson-esque. Was Magnus born in 1992? I think he was born in 1991. So I guess Magnus could, I could have played like Magnus. Cautiously hug. Never. All right. Um, no, yeah, I, I, I played one minute the Singfield Cup and I beat Alejandro Ramirez 5-0. And then I played um, MVL and he beat me 5-3. We didn't have any money on other people were side betting. But I mean, obviously MVL, that's a different level than me. Ridiculous. But MVL was funny. I jokingly said to Caruana, it was a joke, that I would play him like for $50 a game in one minute. I was kidding, because I wouldn't. And MVL said, oh, I'll bet on Ben. Ben's better than you in one minute. I was like, what? I mean, I might be, but I'm not playing somebody who's 2,800 fee day for money. 
I'm not, you know, I'm not doing that. I don't care if I'm better. But I mean, you know, I was better. But, you know, now I can't do anything. Yeah, Grishuk lost a lot of money betting on Alejandro. He was the only one who would bet on Alejandro. Everybody else was, like, laughing at him. Frankly, ridiculous. Now if I played Alejandro, I would just get crushed. But, you know, 10 years ago. Well, 10 years ago. 420, Alderon 39. Fabi's not good in one minute. No. And when I say he's not good, he's probably better than me. But he's, you know, he's not, like, he's number two in the world by rating. He's not number two in one minute. No. No. Terrible. No, I, I'm no good now. You have to get in a time machine and watch me play one minute, you know, before you guys were born. Then I played okay. Um, all right. So we played a QGA, I think. Oh, no, it was it was this. It was the four, yeah. I always play A3. I wonder if I played A3. Yeah, I always play A3. Okay, it looked like a QGA because it sort of transposed into one. Because I didn't move my bishop yet. So this is actually... This right here is a Kiro Khan Panov attack where I've played A3. But DC4 is just, I think that's just wrong. A3 is not bad because I can play C5 and B4 if he doesn't play A3. It doesn't take. Now this is just a straight up QGA. So look, straight up. Yeah, this is just a, like a, a normal, you know, Queen's Gambit. Uh, C5 and... You know, knight c3, here, here. I think it's the same position. Um, let me click on the position. Bam! Wait, something changed. What changed? Oh, because takes, takes. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. Okay. So this is from a QGA. This is probably a theoretical position, but different move order. And it's common for these to transpose. Okay, and I learned a long time ago, a long time ago, um, whenever they play a6, you shouldn't let them play b5 with tempo. You should move your bishop. If they play b5, you hit them with d5. And I learned that from the Eagles. And they said, hit them when they're up, hit them when they're down. Oh, that was kick them. All right. So that way they have a, a problem here on the diagonal. And he did play b5, so d5. And already the engine likes white a lot. Yeah, I took with the queen. I wonder if the engine wants to take with the bishop. It says they're about the same. It slightly prefer. Oh, now it prefers the queen. It says they're about the same. Okay. So the reason to take with the queen instead of the bishop, I take with the bishop and he defends his knight and I take his knight to win this. I can't because the queen defends it. However... If he trades queens now, it, the, the game is over. I'm attacking his knight. If he defends his knight, I take it, and the bishop's not defended. So, for example, and then QED. Okay. That's Latin, Dolan. Evidently, I'm an educated man. Now I really hate myself. Okay, so he has to play some other move. And now I play queen h5, and I got some, some pressure here, Right? Recommended by David Bowie and, um, you know, the famous guy, Freddie Mercury. So white has a big advantage here because I got this, I got this, I got this, I got everything. Okay, he played queen d6, which is the engine move. Bishop g5. Rook d8 is not the best move. Take, take knight g5. Threatening f7 and h7. h7 being more important because it's checkmate. So the only move is queen g6. And this is the most surprising move of the game. And then I, I had really good technique because I, I probably still have good technique, but it was better then when I could see stuff. So what's the best move for white? And it's surprising. You guys can do it. QGD, QED, right. Go Tombstone. Bishop takes F2 is illegal. A couple people, Queen F takes H7. I don't know what that means. Queen H7, boom, and boom goes the dynamite. Yeah, I played, Knight takes E7. What? Okay, so I did play Queen H7, which wins a pawn. 
If I take on g6, he can take with the knight. Um, so I take this, and now I'm up a pawn. This is attacked. This is attacked. And if he moves his rook, my knight can escape. And while it escapes, it threatens f7. So I gain a tempo also. So he 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 played. Did he play rook f8? Well, he did. Okay. That's the best move. Engine likes that. Bishop d5 is the best move. Right. I'm just a pawn up. I'm a king side pawn up. But I made it look easy. It's not easy. King f1, move your king to the center. Never play f6. Terrible. b3, stopping his knight from entering. And then rook d6 is annoying. As I said. Rook c6, hooray. Knight d4. Rook c5, yay, attack more pawns. a4, boo! b4 is better. Still loses a pawn. But, okay, this is ridiculous now. And then he resigned here. Now, for most of you, resigning is absurd for black because he's only down a pawn. However, he's going to lose his b pawn, and then he's just got no hope. His knight can't do anything. And the engine says I'm up 3.4 because his position is so bad. Even my king's better than his. So that was one of my favorite games because I think I played really well. Now, maybe I didn't, but I think I did. So I wouldn't be surprised if this was a 99. I would be shocked if it was less than 90. If it's less than 90, since a lot of you came from Naroditsky's stream, I'm going to destroy everything Naroditsky style. You know, the lights, the camera, the, the mouse, everything. If it's less than 90. I have no idea what it's going to say, but it's got to be high 90s. I can't have one of my favorite games. I sucked. I would just cry forever. Yes. Now God knows what it's like when I have a gun. 99.1. I thought I played well that game. He played 94.1. Not bad. Uh, used to be good. Why am I, why am I, why do I do this on my stream? Look at old games that I play great and then realize how bad I am. Horrible. I mean, Kasparov could do the same kind of stream where he plays perfect every move and there's thousands of variations. And it's not even possible, but he does it anyway. And then now, you know, he hangs a queen. Horrible. It's worse than me. I mean, he was by far the best player in the world. And then now he's, you know, he's older than me, if that's possible. Is it possible to be older than me? I guess. Now he plays in a, you know, 10-player St. Louis rapid event and comes in eighth. He used to come in first by five points. I mean, I can't imagine what he feels like because I know what I feel like. Man, harsh. Choking on his own rage. Thinking about it. Damn. Uh... Let's see. Cool t-shirt. I remember. Man, and, and, and I remember Robert Parrish was great for Boston Celtics. And then I guess he didn't have a lot of money, I guess. So he played for Rufus and Doofus the last couple of years of his career. He was like a bench player from Milwaukee or Minnesota. Jesus Christ. I mean, come on, man. Horrible. I don't want to see that. Terrible. Bulls. Okay, and the worst thing, here's the worst thing. If there is, if it's possible to be the worst thing, is Shaq. Shaq playing for Cleveland, like as a reserve when Michael when um LeBron played for them. You know, when Shaq was old and couldn't move. I mean, that, he shouldn't have done that. He can't. You guys aren't old enough, but I saw Shaq when he was good. He shouldn't play when he's not good because that ruins the good part for me because most people just saw him at the end of his career when he was no good. You don't know how good he was. So I... Horrible. Shaq is a reserve. I mean, come on. Christ. Never been so mad. Fenris BZ subscribe. Good, good. I perished the thought. Man, Albert Pujols is no good. God damn. Yeah. 
Man, Shaq and Orlando. God damn. Yeah. Yeah, Shaq and the end of his career. Blah. Blah. But Shaq in his prime. Now that now that was Shaq. Damn. Then then no good. Very similar to Tyson. Tyson won every fight in one round, and then he went to prison, then he got out of prison, then he fought really strong opponents, and he just lost, he lost it all the time. But before he went to prison, he went he won every he won in one round. And when he fought Spinks, Spinks was um undefeated. And he was the other champion. They had like a lot of champions. Never lost. He threw like zero punches against Tyson. He just got beat to a pulp. If you watch the Spinks-Tyson fight, Michael Spinks, you'll think Spinks is just a terrible fighter. You'll think he's like, like an easy opponent for Tyson until he gets to the top. I mean, he just gave up before the fight started. He had no intention of winning that fight. He's never been so scared. I never saw a world heavyweight champion who won every fight they've ever had be so scared. Terrible. Never been so mad. Yeah, and, and, and Leon Spinks, I saw him when I was a kid. I was playing Little League Baseball, and he was there watching, because I guess maybe his kid was playing, I don't know. But he was there after he beat Ali, too. Yeah, if you if you watch Tyson Spinks on YouTube, Michael Spinks, you just think that guy's no good. Like, oh, that's just an easy fight for him. That that guy was world heavyweight champion and won all of his fights, and he looked like me, except worse than me. It, it was horrible. I mean, it looked like he almost, he didn't lose on purpose because it was, he lost too badly. He would have put up a better fight if he lost on purpose. It was it was absurd. Terrible. Kobe. Yeah, Shaq would throw you to the ground and then dunk and then take the ball and throw it at you and the refs would go, yep, good play. Man. Go Shaq. See, you guys in the chat and guys who aren't in the chat don't understand how things work. You think somebody's big or somebody's strong, why aren't they doing something else? Okay, football players who are very fast are very fast. But if they try for the Olympics, which he did, then, you know, they come in eighth out of nine because, you know, they're, they're fast in football. They're not fast for a fast person. They're not, they're not fast for the best athletes in the world who just do running. Now, they're stronger than those guys, that's for sure. And if you think a football player or a basketball player can become a boxer because they're big and strong, boxing is a skill. So if you don't have skill, then anybody would beat Shaq, anybody would beat these football players because they don't box. So they get outboxed. They don't box. The fact that he's big doesn't matter. Okay, I'm big, and if I fought a fighter who was like 120 and was the world champion of their weight class, would you bet on me because I weigh twice what he weighs? I would never hit him, ever. And if he hit me once, I've never been punched in the face by a professional boxer. So I wouldn't like that. I mean, so I would just, I would lose immediately. I don't know how to box. So you can't take people who don't know how to box and say, well, that guy's big, so he'd win. That's an insult to the sport. And a similar, an analogous situation would be, and this is very common, somebody's a genius in college or high school, and they're like, oh, you should play chess. You're a genius. So you'd be the best chess player. Frankly, ridiculous. Never been so mad. I used to weigh 240, now I weigh more. Showed you. Ooh, a shovel might be good. 
I'm 200 points. Somebody who's 120, their punches can't hurt me? What? If they punch me in the face, I'd be unconscious. Here's what they weigh. Terrible. Never been so bad. I am vegan. I'm not sure if you were kidding now. Yeah, Metcalf looked pretty big compared to those other guys. Yeah. By the way, it's the same thing. If somebody's the best in the world at track and field, I mean, they run really fast. If they play football, they might be fast, but, you know, they don't want to get hit by somebody who's twice their size. So, you know, it doesn't mean they can catch. It doesn't mean they can run a route. It doesn't mean they know how to play football at all. But you guys think that you think there's a crossover. There's not. There's, I mean, crossover is you lose. That's the crossover. It's just fun to, to see what would happen, but they're not going to be world class. Uh, would you win against Magnus? No, Magnus would crush me in boxing. Crush me. Crush me. Crush me. Go, Spencer. Didn't even see Spencer was here. I still don't see that he's here, but yay, go Spencer. Spencer's the best. There he is. It's a crossover episode. That's right. You are here. What could I beat Magnus in? Bridge. I'm a better bridge player than Magnus. That's for sure. I don't think he plays. If he plays, I'm still better than him. Yeah, bridge. Hooray. Obviously, gentlemanly club life. Seinfeld trivia? Probably. I'd probably beat him in lots of different trivias of certain shows. English? Probably not. Probably speaks better English than I do. I mean, he was on The Simpsons, so you got to watch what you say about him. Boxing Fabio or Magnus? Jesus. Tombstone quotes, I could beat him. Yeah. Um, Jim Thorpe was good, and so was uh, Bo. Bo Jackson was great at... And, and Deion Sanders. But yeah, I mean, obviously, if there's billions of people in the world, there's one or two who can play really well at two things. But for the most part, you know, like when Michael Jordan played baseball or Tim Tebow played baseball, I mean, Tim Tebow came and play football. I mean, come on. By the way, you know who's good at football and baseball? Is Kaepernick. Kaepernick was a pitcher, and he could have played in the major leagues. He threw 90 miles an hour, but he decided to be quarterback. So Kaepernick was good at baseball and football. But it's really rare that somebody's really good at two or three. I mean, it's rare. You can't just say, like, Shaq is big. He should be a boxer. He'd be a boxer who never hit anybody and got beaten to a pulp because he doesn't know how to box. He's not a boxer. He's a basketball player. Terrible. Uh, too tall... Too tall Jones tried to box and he was too tall. Yeah, it didn't didn't do well. Yeah. Seven and three ace things. Uh I don't know, it doesn't matter, they both win. Hooray. Is Atlanta better than Boston? Let's see. In basketball, they are this year. Usually no. In baseball. The, it's usually similar, but not this year. Boston's better. Football? I mean, the New England Patriots aren't in Boston. But uh, I guess since, since Brady left, they're about the same. Maybe Atlanta's better. We don't have a hockey team. We used to have two different hockey teams. They both left the NHL. They left, they left Atlanta. Uh, that was before I got here. 
Uh, our soccer team's better if they have a soccer team. Uh, let's see. Nightlife. Suburbs. Weather. Yeah, Atlanta wins over Boston for one reason. Is Boston's weather is horrible in the winter. Horrible. And Atlanta's fine. Atlanta's weather is always good. So Atlanta wins. We win. Yeah. Tom Glavin is actually a very good golfer. Or is that Smoltz? I think it's both of them. Lendl was a good golfer also. Yvonne Lendl. When I say good, I mean really good. I mean, like, they could be pros. They just be bad pros. You know, the better, better what they do. Yeah. Well, it's not the winter, it's May. So it's, of course it's 65. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard Romo's good. Yeah, some of Buckhead is nice, it's true. Alpharetta is nice. Roswell's nice. Dunwoody's nice. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of nice. And Midtown is great. Midtown in Atlanta has fantastic nightlife and restaurants. I mean, just fabulous. Yeah. Atlanta has a lot of vegan places, surprisingly. And we have this great chess club here. And what does Boston have? Having said all of that. You know, Holden's going to go to Boston. Bam! Etc. Mm. No, none of that's true about Shaq can't lose in boxing. <laughs> ridiculous. Everything you've ever said is ridiculous. Okay, back to whatever it is I was doing. Um... Next game. Did I analyze this game? Oh, yeah, I played 99. All right, last game. This is against the Canadian player from Windsor, Vladimir Jerkolik. And I believe, but I can't prove, at one point, possibly now, possibly now, but at one point, he was president of the Canadian Chess Federation. It could be that he is now. He's about 2,100. He plays a lot in Michigan because he lives across the border. I mean, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Now, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Windsor's next to Michigan, yeah. South Detroit, very good. Okay, and this game was played, you know, when I was in my mid-20s, I guess. I played my usual. You guys know my usual. You guys, you guys know, yeah. All right, so I've had this position a million trillion times, and I never realized that she's the one who shot Andy. All right. Yeah, H3 and G3 doesn't leave a great impression. But okay, he stopped he stopped me from making my night moves Bob Seeger style. Terrible. All right. So not too exciting yet. Not too exciting. Long Castle. Now it's exciting. So the engine always likes white in this opening. Even if black has mate in one, the engine likes white. However, the engine does not like white after long castles. Okay? Because I get B5 in, and I'm not even sacrificing a pawn. Well, actually, I'm sacrificing a pawn because he can take with a queen. But okay, I get the two open files to his king. So, yeah, now it says it's equal. Now, obviously, when it says it's equal, that means black's better. Because it always thinks white's winning. Because it has more space. And it just assumes... Nobody's going to mate anybody, so white's just better. So when white's not better, that means it thinks black's going to do some stuff and some junk. Yeah. Yay, it's Karen. Go Karen. I've been to Canada many times, especially as a kid. Yeah. Okay. Back to whatever it is I was doing. He played there. See, now that's not going to work. 
And this is like my game with Gelfand, okay? Now, I'm not showing you my game with Gelfand. I'm just showing you how it's like my game with Gelfand, just because of you know, where the rooks are. So I was white. I've never looked this from the black side, so I'm going to be confused here. I'm not going to show you the game. I'm just going to show you the position that we got to. It's not easy because I, I don't usually look at this from this this angle. So I'm probably going to forget everything. Sorry. Then this is the losing move. Okay. And in this position, he, he played here. Engine says that's horrible. He actually needs his rook on d8 to defend against, you know, the, what's going to happen on, on the D file. And this, I mean, this, that's not, that, that's not happening. Okay, so this is move 18 for white, and on move 25, he resigned. And I was plus like 700. So it was a 700 club. All right, sorry, I, I had trouble remembering that. Okay, so here he played rig DG1. This is after the golf fan game. This is played... When I was in my 20s, Gelfand, I was 19 when I played him. Yeah. So, yeah, this that's, that. you know, come on. Okay, back to whatever it is I was doing. Always play King B1. Yeah. See, now when I do it, it's fine. Now, the reason I play this rook to B8 and not this rook, there's some chance the A file opens, some chance. But I want to have the F8 square for these pieces just in case. Like if he puts it in H, I want to go here. If I need to defend here, I can play bishop f8. If he's beating me on the h file, I can run away. So I don't want my rook on f8 because I want my rook on f8. If I play f5, I'm not playing f5. So, okay. So he put it in a, and I retreated. The engine likes this move. Okay. Now I started the long journey, which I've done before in this opening, 98 to c7 to b5 to d4. D4 is a good square for the knight. Know what I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean. And actually, you can't get there quickly, even on an empty board. It takes four moves. This is actually the quickest way to get there, even if there's nothing on the board. It always takes four moves. Like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. When it's two squares away diagonally, it's hard to get there. But it's worth it. So if he takes on B5... He's getting crushed. If you play knight d4, he's getting crushed. Okay. So he plays bad move. He should be attacking me. Shouldn't play this and then leave these pawns here the rest of the game. Horrible. But what's he doing? Ridiculous. Yeah. Now I play knight f8. Um, because when I play here and he takes... If I take with a C pawn, I want to get my knight to C5. Knight on G6 isn't doing anything. It's just going to get attacked. So I just moved it out of the way. Finally, he did something. And I did, you know, what I said I was going to do. Bishop B3 is an awful move. Hooray! Yeah, he does a lot of nothing after he played this. A lot of not getting his rooks active and his pawns active. Terrible. Queen c7. I want to play knight b6. I'm going to take his bishop. Okay, knight b6. Take, take. Bishop takes f7 is a blunder. Uh, the engine says white's better if he plays this move, which is a weird move. Since this knight's hanging and this bishop's hanging. This is white slightly better, otherwise he's dead lost. Yeah. So now he's up a pawn, but you can see that his king is shallow and pedantic. And my king's pretty safe. Okay, rook b8, bishop e3, which is not good. Knight b3, check exclam, former muscle. Um, he has to play king b2. This is frankly ridiculous. Threatening the queen, threatening checkmate. If the queen moves, this is checkmate. Etc. So he has to move his king, which he did. Knight d2 check. Take on c4. And obviously I'm winning now. 
He tried to trade pieces because he's getting mated. Trying is the first step to failure, unfortunately. Now, if he plays something to B1, let's say Rook, I can trade everything, then take his bishop, and then play bishop G5. Um, actually, the engine wants me to win this way. Yeah, I like that too, actually, I must say. Yeah, king here, king here, and it says I'm plus five because these pawns are ridiculous. And I have a pass C pawn, so completely lost endgame. So he didn't play rook B1, he played queen C3. I take, now if he takes the queen, I have the intermezzo, and then I'll be up a piece. So he has to take back. He can't take with the queen, because checkmate's good for black. Okay, and I don't want to trade queens, obviously. So take that, threatening his rook. The d pawn's hanging. He checks me, but I saw it. Queen d2. He's in really bad time trouble here. Bishop g5. And obviously, black's just winning here. All my pieces dominate all his pieces. Knight c3. Queen c4. The engine wants to play queen takes, but I'm not going to trade queens. I got too much going on here. Rook f5. Never play rook f5. E4, that's one of my favorite moves. It's not even the best move. But it, it's maybe it's the best move. The idea is if he goes here, I said if, then I have this check because his rook's not here. And he can't play knight b1 because I take it mate. Plays knight d1, I play queen f6 check and win his rook. He plays queen d1, queen f6 forks these and I win. Thanks, Ethan Owens, for the sub. So he can't take my bishop, but I want to open up this diagonal. So I play e4. Okay, he did take, which actually the engine says he should, which is funny. Okay. Then he played rook g7 check. Takes. And he defended his knight. And this is one of my favorite moves ever. I'm not saying it's the best move. I'm saying it's one of my favorite moves. And I've shown this before but you guys don't remember. Again, I'm not saying it's the best move. It's just my favorite. The engine says it's really good, but not the best. But the engine's wrong. The moves that are my favorite moves are not the moves that are your favorite moves. Your favorite moves are sacking your queen for mate in 20 and sacking all your pieces and mating with a pawn. These are my favorite moves. And I learned this from Vidmontis Malasowskis from Lithuania, your favorite grandmaster. He played this move against me, and it was the greatest move ever, and I resigned. Now, remember, now remember, it's, I'm not saying it's the best move. Every move wins. I'm up the exchange, his king's no good. Pawns are all weak. Every move wins. But this is my kind of move. And I'm really glad he resigned after it because that's appropriate. Should resign after this move. Yeah, Thaddeus is correct. Yeah. Man, Thaddeus donates a lot. That's why he's correct. H6, and he's in Wang Chung. There's no move he can make. I stopped him from playing H6. See? Yeah, there's no, there's no move here. Can't move your king, it's illegal. If you try to move these pawns, that's illegal. So you, you got these four things left. If you move the A pawn, rook B3 wins immediately. If you move the G pawn, I just take it. But that's probably the best move. If you move your queen, you have to defend your knight. Then you're undefending G3, which means I'm threatening to go on the back rank and this pawn and queen E5. But the point is, h6 shows your opponent like you're helpless. You can resign now. There's nothing you can do. If I made a threat, he would do something about it. So I just said, it's your move, and he realizes he has no move. And the longer the engine thinks, it says, like, I'm plus nine now. Nine. Go ads. Ads aren't playing if you sub. So if you sub to my channel, you don't watch ads. Easy. No problem. 
Didn't Rook B4 win the knight? Rook B4 does nothing. Is that what you meant? Didn't you mean, doesn't Rook B4 do nothing? I think that's what you meant. You just typed the wrong thing. Yeah. Rook B4 to C4 attacks his knight, then he defends it. The problem you guys have, and it's not the only problem, is you think when you make moves that your pieces are still where they were and where they went to. So for you, the rook could go here, but since the rook is here now, in your mind, if you have one, you think the king still can't go to the B file. And when you analyze, that's a common mistake people make, is they move pieces around, but those pieces are still where they were, so their opponent can't do anything. So if I had another rook, then rook c4 would win his knight, but I only have one. So king b2 defends the knight, etc. Mainly etc. And don't forget it. The engine says every move wins. Because I'm, it's too winning. The, the point is h6 shows him that his position is shallow and pedantic. Now it says I'm up 8.86 and every move is absurd. But h6 is my kind of move. What's funny is I beat Vlad another time where my last move was similar. I made some really boring move that made him and he resigned. But it was when I played the other game, it was better than this, the, the last move. This, it didn't matter. But then it was actually, it was, it was the best. The best, Jerry, the best. The only thing better is, is, is uh, Montana guy who, who, who gave me $500. He's better. Also, we got a 50 sub donation from Drill Jockey. So this was uh, the last two streams, you know, I, I could have begged for change and made more money. But this stream was really good. You guys came through today. Frankly, ridiculous. She Jesus. Hooray. Good, good. Yeah. Montana loves his chess. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry you live in Montana, but you know, you gotta live somewhere, I guess. <sighs> Truth hurts. Why don't you checkmate him? Well, that wouldn't be nice. Big sky country. All right. It's really nice here. Good, good. But they don't have Publix. Go Montana chess. Montana's pretty... I don't, I don't know if I've been to Montana. I don't think I have. But you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. There's only one way I was ever there. And that's if I drove through when I drove from Michigan to Portland, Oregon. Because we drove there and back uh, for the 1987 U.S. Open. Do we go through Montana or we don't? I don't even know. Is that one of the, or that's the wrong, yeah. If you do go through Montana, then I was in Montana. No, we didn't go through Canada. Uh, Oska Mosca subscribed. Hooray. You can't go through Montana when crossing states. What? If you took 80, you missed Montana. But if you took 90, you were there. Uh, I don't remember if we took 80. I mean, I was, it was 87. I wasn't driving. I didn't have a driver's license in 87. You know, I don't think we went through Montana because I don't remember doing that. But to be honest, I don't remember, you know, I don't, know. I don't remember what we did. Oh. Chicago to Seattle. Yeah, I had a driver's license when I was like 23, maybe. I think that's, yeah, because I lived in Europe and I didn't have a driver's license uh, between 18 and 22. Maybe I did have... No, I didn't. I had a passport, but I didn't have a driver's license. No. And then when I moved back to the U.S., I got a driver's license at some point. It was 23. Uh, all right, I'll go to Montana. 
And the billing's open. I've never been to Baltimore. My first car was a... <clears throat> I think it was a Pontiac, like 1000. It's the same as a Chevette, I think. I bought it... We went to a vegan restaurant or a vegetarian restaurant, me and my dad. And on the street, we saw a car that said for sale and it was $400 and I didn't have a car. So we bought it. It wasn't a good car. <laughs> you mentioned a game where your opponent had no legal moves and you still lost. You got me. Sounds like a lot of games I played. I lived in uh, Brussels for four years. Who could have guessed? <laughs> Why Europe? Chess? You gotta live somewhere. Yeah. All right, who am I gonna raid? Let's see, there's you, 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 you. Ugh. Uh, ugh. I don't know. Got to read somebody. Read me? All right. I wonder what happens if I type that in. I'll say like, you're an idiot. Stop typing that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to read Canty. Is he streaming? Did his stream just start? Is he streaming now? Do I have to go look or you guys will give me the, give me the skivvy? I read chess bras more than I do Canty. I mean, if Canty's name was Panty, then we'd have Panty and Bra. So that would be tough. 10 minute in stream standby right now. He's in standby. Terrible. Yeah, all right. Ugh. I think I'll raid Karen, but you know, not on the stream. Man, I'm hungry. Rawr, mad because I'm too hungry. Panty raid better than candy raid? Eh, I'd rather have a candy raid. It was funny. Um, on the Sunny we were talking about earlier, like a day or two ago, with the quashing of the beefs, Karen and I watched that either last night or the night before. I don't know. She fell asleep. I've seen it 20 times. But he's like, do you have anything to, you know, you have something to say to D? And he's like, yeah. You know, Ponderosa. He says, D, when you weren't in your apartment, I, I sniffed your panties and I'm sorry. She's like, you did what? He's like, no, no, not that. <laughs> uh, and so forth. Mainly and so forth. Yeah. Uh, what? Who? All right. See you guys tomorrow at 1 p.m. I'm going to play in Arena Kings. It'll be before 1 p.m. Because I, you know, I probably like a quarter to one. Something like that. And then Karen's streaming four to six with Ovi from the stream Chess with Ovi. And then at 7 p.m. tomorrow, I'm teaching a class. You can sign up at uh, hclchessclub.com slash events. You can type exclamation mark class. It'll give you the URL maybe. Who knows? And don't forget...